Good evening and welcome to Bill Ruppel Stadium for tonight's matchup between the Neville Tigers and the Grant Cougars. As we get ready for the Tiger Tailgate pregame show here at Bill Ruppel Stadium. Let's go have our interview with JD this past Wednesday. Hi everybody, welcome back to segment number two here on Tiger Talk. Uh, Stuart Shelby joined by Neville Head Athletic Trainer. <coughs> Excuse oh, me. You okay? Man. Need some help? You okay? Every time I talk to you, I get choked <laughs> up. Really? <coughs> I usually, I used to have that effect on women, but they usually say, can you go? <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah. So, yeah, it's kind of the opposite effect. Hey, segment number two brought to you by our good friend Frank Nettles over at Frank Nettles Automotive. So, uh, Jason, welcome back to Tiger Talk. Year Thanks, two man. at year two. Neville and year two on on Tiger Talk. Yeah, yeah, I appreciate it's it. It's one of the perks. It's yeah, probably right. what lured you, you know, into. J- just the opportunity to, to hang out at Melvin's with you guys. <laughs> it's the tops. Yeah. Well, look, um, a lot of stuff going on. You're very involved with uh, the, uh, the, tell me, is it Louisiana Athletic Trainers Association? Yeah, Louisiana Athletic Trainers Association, okay. yeah. Yeah, so, again, we've done a lot of stuff um, throughout the years to, to kind of make Louisiana a lot safer uh, at the secondary school level. Uh, you know, we're really, really proud. Some, some of what we do by talking and arranging mm-hmm. and educating. Other stuff we do by, ed- by uh, legislation. Um, so back in 2019, so before the pandemic, we introduced legislation that was called the Serious Sports Injury Act. And basically that had to do with is, is taking precautions uh, and setting standards and guidelines so that all high schools had to meet certain qualifications and best practices when it came to health care mm-hmm. at the secondary school level. Now, at that time, Louisiana was ranked 47th nationally. And uh, over the years, I'm I'm really glad to say that right now we're ranked 5th nationally. Yeah, so again, uh, through legislative efforts and and education, and again, it wasn't necessarily even that. It was was our coaches association that also was involved in this. So it's really a a team effort Mm -hmm. for everybody to understand the need to have an athletic trainer and uh, again, the, the, great, the easiest message in the world is to tell people that, hey, look, an athletic trainer takes care of your greatest possession, and that's your child. Yeah. And uh, that's, that's an easy sell for some people. Well, d- definitely everybody uh, at Neville's happy that you, uh, you're over at uh, 604 site. But let's talk about – you talk about going from 47th to 5th in such a short time. What kind of changes were made that caused that – ranking to improve so yeah so much. and again a lot of that depends upon what you have legislatively mm-hmm. uh, you know because again we can have recommendations but it doesn't really mean anything until it's in law I got you. And, and and again that's that's the great thing about napoleonic law louisiana is that again there's open to interpretation but the law is the law so again part of that serious sports injury act says again that every high school has to have an emergency action plan i got you per venue and, uh, and not just something that you copy and paste from somebody else. It has to be venue-specific for each school mm-hmm. and each venue. And uh, in addition to that, they, uh, they have to uh, make sure that they have physicals uh, annually, uh, proper coaches' education, CPR first aid for their for coaching staff and other people that are involved in their, their athletic program. And uh, the other thing that probably is – has been a little bit more controversial over the last three years it has to do with the wet bulb temperature. Yeah. And um, I was going to get to that. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. This and, it, and it's, you know, everybody focuses on the wet bulb, the wet bulb, the wet bulb. Uh, but tied on in, tied in with that is also the, the mandate that requires that you have a cold tub accessible and easily accessible as, as use of a uh, emergency uh, mm-hmm. device. As a device, mm-hmm. yeah. Yeah. So if, if a, what you're telling me is if an athlete or gets overheated or any personnel gets overheated while they're out in the you know doing athletic activities right you've pretty much got to get your cold tub already the cold tub's got to be kind of ready to go because Mm -hmm. again you don't have a whole lot of time and again i'm not going to talk much about the age of our coaching staff but there's a lot of blood pressure medicine being floated around (laughs) yeah all right up there 604 is high you know what i'm saying yes i'm kind of one of them Mm -hmm. so um you know with 110 degrees and your own blood pressure medication and you start walking straight ahead and this happened to me and coach collins goes hey boy you need to go inside i'm like no no no, i'm fine he goes you're walking like this and i'm like (laughs) So I got a little dehydrated, too. So uh, understanding the signs and symptoms of what you're going to experience and then recognizing those Mm -hmm. are the the primary focus of that. So, well, I mean, and you cover all the 
activities at, at Neville. I mean, you're not only just the trainer for the football team, the basketball mm-hmm. team, soccer, baseball, softball, yeah. track. Yeah, they all they all make their way yeah. across the to the field house. So and they all work in there, and it's good. And you also have a team of students that help you out as well. Why yeah, don't you I talk have about some of them. I have some great young men and ladies that that uh, take their time freely. It's all volunteer, obviously. You know. Um, I always get tickled because in high school, people do a lot for a T-shirt, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I love that aspect. And, uh, uh, you know, a free pizza and T-shirts, you can get a lot of stuff done in life. Yeah. I really wish the rest of the world would work like yeah. that because if I could get an oil change for a pizza, I could probably – I would really look forward to doing that. So. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, those those teams that help you, I mean, you, it, it's grown over, over the years. Yeah, you know? yeah. You really kind of want to understand, and, and, and what's great about teaching and having these three classes that I teach is, is finding those kids that have an interest in, A, medicine. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't have to necessarily be athletic training. It could be nursing. Yeah. Maybe they want to go to medical school or PT school. And, and trying to find those kids that have that type of interest and then kind of direct their flow toward that area and give them some base knowledge, I, you know, anatomy, physiology, biomechanics, mm-hmm. understanding principles of physics, yeah. just simple physics. All right. Well, yeah, I mean, okay, yeah. the, not just the training deal. You also are, are part of a, another organization up there at, at Neville, aren't you? You want to talk about? Yeah, the, I, I, I'm uh, one of the sponsors of uh, of, of Boom. That's right. Uh, that's uh, directed by Courtney Courtney Wallace, mm-hmm. and uh, again, we uh, uh, we do a lot of community service work. And again, he kind of handles the uh, he kind of handles the. I guess the activities, you know how there's like a mom and dad relationship where one of them has to be the baddie? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I have to do the scheduling, the organizing, and, and stuff like that. So mm-hmm. not the fun stuff. You I know. got you. Uh, but, uh, again, uh, we, we've had some, some really good kids, and it's really been beneficial to see these kids that uh, um, that have an opportunity to explore themselves and, and find other things to do. And, again, when I, when I present the organization to people, you have people that develop relationships yeah. that were at the same high school but did not know each other. Exactly. And then due to this relationship, they're now lifelong friends. Mm-hmm. You, have a, you have a young man that had several absences and several toddies, mm-hmm. but due to his involvement, he went from a 0. point whatever to now he had like a 3.6. Yeah. And, so, and that was really, really impressive. And some people just need direction. Yeah. And, that's, and that's it. Some people just need direction mm-hmm. and guidance and um, we've all kind of remember what it was like to be in high school. Yeah. And um, you, somebody just needs to kind of direct you some, some kind of way. Well, it's not that you don't have athletes and, and other people that are all involved in everything. There's some people in high school that are involved in everything. Yeah. And then there's some people in, in high school that aren't involved in anything. That's right. And sometimes it's just because nobody asked them. Mm-hmm. Or they didn't have – they didn't feel like they were in, in a place that uh, – that they could be involved in right. something and being able to, you know, what I've seen with what y'all have done over the past couple of years is take some of those kids that really didn't know where they were going to fit in, but exactly. had something to, to offer. But in, in turn to be involved in this, you've got to be held accountable for your actions, both in and out of the organization or you can't be in it. Yeah. And I believe that's put, and not only is that motivation to do it, but you're getting held accountable by your peers that are in the in the organization man, as well. Man, they're just all flowers, right? And they start out as little pods. <laughs> yeah, and, and you water them, and you give them sunlight, and you watch them grow. And uh, when they turn into a nice big old flower, you just kind of smile and look back and go, look at y'all. You didn't turn out so bad. You know, <laughs> yeah. you know, I'm kind of happy about that, you know. <laughs> and, they, and they do some, some great performances as well. Have a yeah. good time. Yeah. yeah. Performed with the Bengals a, a couple of times uh, yeah. uh, on this year, which was something kind of new mm-hmm. that they've done. Uh, but uh, it's just – it's molded around uh, kind of the uh, – I guess you could say the uh, 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 fraternity sorority yeah, the type. Greek or, life, or the Greek yeah, life. Yeah, it, it's deal. really based upon the Greek life and what mm-hmm. they have at the collegiate setting. And, again, what you see from, from like a PBIS standpoint, again, is that you gives, I guess, kids another outlet, mm-hmm. right? And uh, some people like to draw. Some people like to act. Some people like to sing. Everybody kind of has their niche. Mm-hmm. And, and giving other people an opportunity to be impactful in some way and, and just kind of find themselves. I mean, there's so many great stories about the, the kids that were on our first line about uh, uh, very, very quiet. Yeah. You know, we had a young man that did, was very quiet, didn't like to talk a whole lot because he stuttered. Yeah. 
and now he has the confidence in himself to talk publicly and speak in front of groups and stuff like that, and you don't really hear the stutter. And so you really kind of wonder, like, yeah, is, is, that, is, is that, that confidence, is yeah. that growth that you had as an individual Never have know. to take away that stutter? So not to be a well, speech path well, or anybody. No, but, yeah, I, mean, but I, I think sometimes that has some deal. You know, a yeah. lot of times uh, anxiety can – can cause Definitely. things like that. I mean, Definitely. you have uh, fear of social anxiety as well as that, but it being able to have that outlet, I mean, mm-hmm. where kids aren't just kind of hiding and, and pulling behind the curtain mm-hmm. type of deal. They can p- kind of burst through the curtain and uh, have something to offer. Yeah. And I, that, take, I, that goes a long way. Yeah. When we do that, when we do that nasty syllabus day where we all just kind of have to sit there and go through the, the whole sheet and read it out loud, you know, I always kind of end on like, you know, you, ha- you have four years. You know, what are you going to do in four years? Are you going to be involved? Mm-hmm. Are you just, are you, you going to paddle? Or are you just going to sit in the boat and just float down the river? Yeah. You know? Um, so you have to ask yourself, what are you going to do? And uh, this, this certainly is an outlet, not just athletics. Um, uh, there's so much stuff at Neville High School to do. Yeah. So much stuff. And, and, you know, I tell every kid to be active, do something, be involved. Ironically, you told that story. There's a young, young lady right in my class, uh, my first hour class. I told her uh, just after class, I'm like, what are you, what are you doing, you know? Mm-hmm. What do you mean? Well, I mean, what are you going to do with your life? And we just had that little life moment in between classes. And I'm like, why don't you come over after fall break and just kind of watch what we do, all right? And if that's something that does interest you, you let me know. Yeah. And so she's going to do that, hopefully. Hopefully so. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's it's being able to do that. And in a short period of time, uh, we appreciate the impact you've had on the kids at Neville as well, and not only on the athletic side but on the, the people side. As well. I know I've enjoyed getting to know you a little bit better over the last couple of years. And yeah. uh, we look forward to uh, having these conversations for a few more years. Yeah, same here, same here. You know, uh, uh, it's always a lot better being, uh, you know, uh, present and accounted for than, than sitting at home. So well, I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. All right. Jason Dunavet, everybody. Uh, coming up next, we'll talk to a couple of Tiger seniors, Dakota Newton <laughs> and, and Brandon Baker. So stay tuned for that. We'll be back with more Tiger Talk right after this. Strong teams accomplish great things by working together. The Neville Tigers and Origin Bank know all about the value of teamwork and the positive impact it has within a community. These strong teams have joined forces to support the Salvation Army of Monroe, offering a helping hand to an outstanding organization that serves people in need throughout Northeast Louisiana. Origin Bank and Neville High School have strengthened our community for generations and are proud to continue to enrich the lives of others. Origin Bank, member FDIC. Truck accidents are different from car accidents. With trucks, you've got federal regulations that may apply all over the land. You need an attorney who's experienced in handling these cases, who knows all those federal laws, and has years of experience fighting for our clients. Whether you're dining in or grabbing to go, at Nukes, we love to share great food, to delight with new flavors, to celebrate every bite. Join us at Nukes Eatery. All right, I, I do, Jason. As we are back here in the Family Solutions broadcast booth, getting ready for this Big matchup between the Tigers and Cougars, a big district matchup. Here's Coach Tannehill talking about it this week at Melvin's. And welcome back, everybody, as we enter our final segment here on Tiger Talk. Lively, lively crowd here on fall 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 break. break. I'm telling you. J.D., he he gets everybody going. Yeah, I know it. I know it. Always enjoy it. Talking with him here, and uh, and you know, not that we don't enjoy talking with you, yeah, Coach no, Well, you know, talking about JD, you know, not only is he a great trainer and you know loves the kids, cares about the kids, and does a tremendous job for us, and takes so much off our coaching staff by what he does, and uh, you know, but he's so you know, as y'all talked about, so heavily heavily involved, and he is. You know, he authored many, many of these bills. Of these bills, and uh, you know, he does a great job in our state athletic pro, uh, trainer program, and uh, just 
Just a great trainer and a great person all around, man. Enjoy having him around every day. Definitely, definitely. He keeps it light, but yeah. Uh, he, yeah. he does. He, he, <laughs> he does a great job like in that training room. Don't let him fool you. Yeah. He, he's got some smarts behind him. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, but uh, all right. So, Coach, you know, come on off here. And we got Grant coming up. You know, uh, an improved Grant program. Much improved Grant. Uh, and, you know, they lose their head coach. Their uh, former head coach yeah. is now at Manny. Who replaced right. Jess Curtis, who's now yeah. at Natchitoches Central, but yep. he had instilled a little bit of fire, a uh, lit a fire underneath that Grant program, and it seems like the new guys uh, kind of carried on that banner for him. They are, they are, and you can see uh, each week how they imp- how they've improved each week. Uh, they played a really good football game last week. Had a chance to beat Grant, I mean, beat uh, Franklin Paris there towards the end of the game, mm-hmm. and. Uh, you know, missed a field goal and uh, had a chance to win and beat a pretty good Franklin Parish team. Uh, they've improved a lot. They've got a lot of kids back from last year. Um, quarterback especially is a good player, mm-hmm. uh, smart kid. And, uh, you know, they've got their defensive and offensive linemen. Most of those guys are back also. And so, you know, and then they've added, you know, this, this fullback, running back guy. The, you know, he – He's a big kid, probably weighs 220 pounds, yeah, and bruiser. he runs downhill. They run a lot of two tight end sets and, uh, you know, try to run the ball inside. They like like to use a lot of clock, mm-hmm. keep the scoring down, that kind of thing. So, you know, our defense is going to have to – we're going to have to make them punt the ball quite a bit, and uh, offense has got to go down and score when we get a chance because we're not going to have a whole lot of chances to score the football. Uh, I mean, know. their best defense is, is, their is ball control. Yep. And, you know, you limit your possessions. Mm-hmm. You know, it's kind of hard to put up 50 if you only have four possessions in, right. in, a, in a game. Oh, no, you're exactly and we, right. We talked about, I believe they had it. I think in the fourth quarter of that Franklin Paris game, they almost yeah they were hit seventeen thirteen. Franklin Paris went made a big throw down the middle of the field, yeah. went down and scored. Quarterback made some plays and ended up running ahead, but they still took it right back down and had a chance to win it at yeah. the end. So it's a it was a good ball game to watch and uh, <clears throat> you know defensively, you know we hadn't talked about their defense, but they've got those three those three guys up front are pretty big kids and and they play pretty athletic. Linebackers are, are pretty mm-hmm. good in space and. Uh, you know what the, they run you know an odd front which is more of a three man front that we don't see very often so it's yeah. going to take us you know a couple of series you know we worked all week against it but uh it it'll still take a little time to to get them squared away and and you know just just how they play that and they play a too high look which we don't see a whole lot either so uh those are all the little things that we'll have to get adjusted to early in the ball game and make sure that that we're blocking the right people and making the right calls on the offensive line and try to get our athletic guys in some space. Yeah. Uh, you you finally popped a big play offensive, I mean, like a, a big pass play. Uh, maybe looking to do a little bit more of that. It's not that you haven't been trying. Right. You know, right. But yeah, we've missed a few this year that we had, we had open. And, uh, you know, as far as throwing the ball down the field, that's just something we've got to get better at each week. And the only way to do that is to work on it in the ball game. And, so uh, I just feel like that, you know, our offense is, is getting better each week. And, you know, obviously we're a run football team mm-hmm. and have been around here for 100 years. Yeah. But, but uh, we, we try to, to get it out in space, some of those quick guys, and, and uh, just, uh, you know, just try to move the ball as best we can. And, uh, you know, with our you know two quarterbacks, both of them have done a great job this year, especially in the run game with our option. But, you know, getting the ball down the field is something we've got to get a little better at as we get towards the playoffs. Well, you, you talk about this district. I, I, I was talking with uh, with Brandon and Dakota about the consecutive district championships. I've lost count. It's been since mm-hmm. the early two thousand. Mm-hmm. I mean, mid two thousands or mm-hmm. late two. Th- when it was Katrina, it was, o- it was Katrina six or seven. Oh six somewhere in there. was the last time. It, uh, you weren't able to win the district champ, whatever district it is. The right. district has changed, yeah. all of that. But trying to keep that streak alive and, and keeping your mind focused and, and all mm-hmm. that, you know, that leads me to my next question is, you know, practice this week. You know, these guys out of school. You don't yeah. have coaches. You know, you, you don't have hands on everybody right. all, uh, all week yeah. this week. It, it can <laughs> kind of get a little – Yes, yeah. but uh, how, how's everything been going? Well, you know, honestly, uh, the kids have handled it well. We went in the afternoon on Monday because we had a freshman game. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Tuesday morning we went at 8 o'clock, went on the field about 9, 
and then this morning went got there at eight. We're going to, was planning on going out about nine, and then the rain came in, so we went straight out. Probably had, you know, I said last week we had a great practice on Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday this week was as good as last Wednesday, so you know, hopefully, you know, and I'm speaking prefer, you know, mainly yeah. on the uh, offensive end, but uh, you know, defensive end, they, it wasn't a whole lot of yelling and hollering. Most people were getting where they needed to be. And uh, today was a good day, obviously, for the offense that uh, we got some things done and accomplished that we've been trying to get done the last two or three weeks. So mm-hmm. uh, it hadn't been bad. You know, we, we've had some a uh, few issues with the weather, like this yeah. morning changing. but uh, And then Tuesday uh, morning, you know, we had a few people tardy. But, you know, and all in all, it's, it's really been a good week considering it's fall break. Uh, and they I, we allowed the kids to vote on when they wanted to have practice and yeah. in the morning or evenings, whatever. And they all said mornings, you know, on Tuesday and Wednesday and Thursday. And, and so we can knock that out and they'll have the rest of the day to go bow hunting or teal hunting or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, they want to go do. And, and uh, Hopefully they're not teal hunting. Right? I don't know yeah, the yeah, season, you know, saying. that kind of thing. You can't – bow hunting is fine, <laughs> yeah, but uh, – <laughs> Till season's yeah. close. You can tell I haven't been duck hunting in a while. <laughs> I know, I know. So, uh, but it uh, it uh, it's been a good week and it's been refreshing to just, just spend a little time with family and yeah. and the other coaches getting to spend a little time with their kids this week. So, uh, uh, you know, just really enjoyed the little breather from the classroom and mm-hmm. that kind of thing. That all our coaches have enjoyed that for sure. You know, the fall break came on uh, came about a couple of years ago, yep. and uh, a lot of people didn't know what to think about it, but I think it is a good time. To kind of catch your breath because mm-hmm. that first few weeks of school is, is you know, it's, it's like drinking non water through a fire, and, yeah. fire hose. And yeah, it's it, you don't really get a break until about this time of year. And, and it, you know, I know as, as a head coach, it's about mid season is when you actually get you can actually breathe. You don't have all the ticket sales and the pep rallies, and everything starts kind of flowing and you know, in a regular old schedule, and, and you kind of get in, you know, mm-hmm. to where where you can handle it a little bit early in the year, man, it's, it's crazy with pictures and, you know, everything else, it's every, like every, every, everything, every, uh, you know, you're around so every much. day is, it seems like there's something else like, oh, yeah. you know, I don't know. Uh, yeah. It's just, it, it can, it can get to you. And, uh, yeah. having a breather is never a, a bad thing. No, sir. No, All sir. Right. Speaking of, of guys who had some good games, let's yeah. maybe throw it to our origin bank players of the week. From last week, I believe we said it was number 77, Braden Blade, Blade, and then Robert Graves. Obviously, third. Robert Graves, man. Yeah, three, three fumble recoveries and two touchdowns just from the defensive yeah, side. That's just by default. Right Braden there. had a great week of practice last week. Um, and he, he, you know, actually the week before against Rustin, he really had a good week. But Bradley, you know, edged him out a little bit. But uh, he had two couple good weeks. Uh, mm-hmm. Graded out the highest last week and uh, has had a good week of practice this week. So, you know, he's getting a little better. He's getting over that little knee injury he had and, uh, you know, really looking forward to see how he develops uh, over the next couple of weeks. Well, okay, so coming into this, we're not not in school, so ticket sales this week. Are we able to just buy them at the gate? You, can get to, you will be able to get them at the gate. Yeah. Uh, it's a good question. Uh, Joy is around some. But uh, it's hit or miss. Yeah. Uh, I think she's going to be out Thursday and, and Friday morning. But she should be around to where we can get tickets for the game at the gate. Coach uh, – Mr. Jim – I almost said Coach Craig. <laughs> Mr. Jim, he'll be around, you know, just like he always yeah. is for the for the game. And uh, you'll be able to get some tickets there. Um, end zone stuff will be the same as it always is. Students – They'll get in with their ID and mm-hmm. however much it usually costs. Yeah, um, it's a, they're donating a dollar to go to St. Yeah, Jude. That's how, yeah, that's been what the, it is. That's yeah. been the uh, yeah the they try to get as many kids that the are norm. still here that are to the ball game and uh, biggest crowd we can get. You know, no, we would need you to come sit in the stands. Another home yeah. game. It's a district ball game. The kids uh, deserve your support and your yeah. in-person support if you can make mm-hmm. it. So we definitely won't. Grant, well, Grant will bring a, bring, Grant will bring they'll a, bring a pretty good crowd. crowd. Yeah, yeah. They, they have in the past. Uh, they definitely have in the past. Okay, so as we get through, uh, kind of wrap up this fall break edition of Tiger Talk, uh, kind of mid, mid-season, mid you know, we're in week seven. seven so, week seven. you know, week seven, we're just past there. Maybe just maybe a, a, a grade report card or – you just some thoughts there from the first half of the half of the season. Kind of give us a status report. Well, in you your know, eyes, from where I'm sitting, you know our defense really played well. Offense, we struggled at times, but we were getting better each week. 
Um, just looking forward to, to seeing what we're going to do this week. Um, you know, obviously we've got to prove, still improve in all areas, but, you know, special teams has gotten a whole lot better since Washtenaw game. Um, mm-hmm. And uh, we've got more consistent on our kicks, and we've got really a whole lot better with our snaps. And, uh, you know, offensively we're starting to get into a little bit of a rhythm, mm-hmm. and uh, hopefully we'll get that. Welcome back here to the pregame show as we're getting ready for the coin toss. We'll take it down to Jason Ewing. Number 13, Jackson. And Stuart Shelby and Robert Lane. Hey. All right, young man, introduce yourself to each other. Grant, you the visiting team, you'll be calling the toss tonight. The red side is the head side, the white side is the tails. The red side is the head, the white side is the tails. What's your call? Tails. You heard what he said? What did he say? It is head. You want to toss, what do you want to do? You want to receive, okay. Which way do you want to kick? You want to kick that way? Okay, you put your back over here, you put your back over here. All right, as we welcome you in here, the, t- the Tigers have met at midfield with the Cougars, and it looks like Grant has won the toss and wants to receive, or we're receiving. We're, yeah, yeah we're, the Tigers are receiving. All right, we got that. Captains tonight for the Tigers are number one, Tyler Dotson, and number 85, Jalen Smith. Captains for Grant, number 78, Nicholas Gradney. Number 13, Jackson Hedrick. And number 37, Caden Chandler. Yeah, and the Tigers won the toss. And oh, the like Tigers. To the Tigers won the toss, and they got it. Okay, thanks for doing that. Well, it's time for the national anthem. So we're going to turn it over to the Neville Tiger Marching Band as soon as we're able. And right now they're talking about. Uh, a couple of Tigers we lost earlier this week. Uh, Steve Jefferson, class of 63, as well as uh, even this morning, uh, Billy Houston, who is uh, grandfather of Thomas Campbell, a current player, and Will Campbell. But, um, you know, to Holly and Lindsay and their families and everybody else in that Houston family, we definitely, our prayers are with you, as well as uh, the Jeffersons for Miss Dana and uh, Becca, Nikki, and Tucker, and and their children. So, think about them uh, this weekend. Now we're going to turn it over to the Neville Tiger Marching Band for our national anthem. A great job by the Tiger Marching Band. The Tigers are on fall break this week. No students here at the school, but uh, they've shown up here this Friday night as we are here to take on the Grant Cougars in week two of our district schedule. Stuart Shelby, Robert Lane here in the booth with you. Uh, Jason Ewing, you heard from him, is our Marion State Bank sideline reporter. And as we sit up here in the Family Solutions broadcast booth. Robert, you know, it's just another game where Tigers expected to win. You want to come out, work on some things, and get the job done early if they, if possible. But, you know, say let's try not to be sloppy. Kids out of school this week, yeah. another kind of distraction yeah. that could 
loom large here this evening? Yeah, fall break is, you know, something new to you and I. Uh, we didn't get that uh, uh, when, when we were in high school. So, you know, I think they practiced in the mornings. They're out of their normal routine. you got to get kids up here. you got to get them home. Um, just for practice. So it's, it's a different kind of feel tonight, you know, uh, the spirit groups and, and, and everybody is kind of out of sorts. But uh, like you said, hopefully that we can come out, we get the ball first, um, you know, go down the field and, and, and get in rhythm and, and put some points on the board earlier, early and, and do what we have to do and, and use this game as a, as a, you know, hopefully a stepping stone. You know, you, yeah. you come out of here injury free and, and uh, play. You want to you want to leave this game feeling good about yourself offensively and defensively. And one uh, as of note, Jay Sean White not going to be in there this evening. And there's the kick by number eleven, Connor Phillips. It's taken by one of the upbacks. That's Isaac Jingina, who's got it and returns it out to the thirty-four yard line. And that's where the Tigers will take over first and ten. Yeah, and Stewart offensively as they huddle here on the sideline with Coach Birch, you know, you, you want to uh, get things going, uh, have success uh, on first down, um, you know, move, move the chains and have a long extended drive, use clock, uh, and, and run your offense. Get better at what you do. Uh, and, and, you know, we've got to control the line of scrimmage, uh, see the offensive linemen making their, their calls. Looks like um, Grant is going to be in a 3-4 three, three, defense. <coughs> We take uh, run the speed option and, and pitches it here. Uh, I believe that is number nine running back, going to be close to a first down. Yeah, uh, that's Fuller pitched it. Uh, Nichols on the carry. He's going to have a Sonic on North 18th Street first down. And just ran the speed option to the field, uh, to this Neville sideline over here. And Fuller did a good job um, t- taking it to the end man on the line of scrimmage and, and making the pitch. And, uh uh, had, a, had a good physical run there by Jalen Nichols to get the first down on the first play from scrimmage. All right, here's Fuller from the shotgun. He turns, hands it to Nichols, makes a cut around the 35, and he's going to have a short gain of about two. Out to the 47-yard line he goes, and it'll be second down and eight for the Tigers. I'd like to say hi to the Weaver family. They're all in Houston here on fall break. So uh, thanks for watching. James Machine Works is a yeah. proud sponsor, yeah. one of the original sponsors here on the Neville Tiger Network. And we appreciate Miss Susan and everybody up there. Saw Ronnie Davidson up in the press box today as Fuller was looking for something. That's going to be a fumble as he – they're going right. to say he pitched it yeah. forward. He was trying to get it to the running back, yeah. kind of threw it underhanded, uh, was put under pressure there, just held the ball too long. Uh, you know, offensive linemen can only hold their blocks for so long. Yeah. Uh, and, and I tell you, Grant, they're, they're pretty physical up front uh, with their front three. And um, they, they got to us there and, and created a big loss. Got to throw that ball away. Um, Sooner. Why? If, so they call intentional grounding? They might have called intentional grounding. I don't know. Well, it's back to the 35, and now it's third down and 20, and Nichols gets the carry, and he's going to be tripped up. At the 40-yard line, and that's going to set up a fourth down and 15, and the Tigers should be punting. And they will. Jake Deal is going to try it out there. I don't understand if the White Hat called it incomplete. Uh, I don't know why we were backed up so far on third down. I, I don't either. If they called it incomplete, I didn't see a flag drop or a call. No, no. Because Unless was, they was, said he was down before he was pitched it. Maybe that's the yeah, – like, like kind of yeah, in the, gra- yeah, in the he grass. Was, he was down. That was the call. Okay. That was the call. Thanks, okay. Jason. Jason's down there earning his keep. Yeah, we'll, we'll, work, we'll work it out yeah. up here. There's a nice punt by Deal, a driving spiral that bounces at around the 23 and takes a nice Neville roll that's going to be down inside the 10 at the Grant 9-yard line. Yeah, really, really good job there by the punter. Uh, deal there and, and kicking, hitting a good punt. That, that's a mm-hmm. huge uh, uh, change of, of field yeah. right there for the Tigers as this defense comes out. We've seen them perform great yeah. pretty much all year uh, and, and expect nothing but good things tonight out of this Tiger defense. All right, your quarterback for Grants, number 13, that's Jackson Hedrick. He's a senior. He has a back to his – Right side and one in the eye. 
They're going to hand it off to the eye back. That's number eight. Is that nine? And that's eight. All right, it says eight is DeMichael Perry. And then they said he was, might be 25. So I, I'm going to say it's DeMichael Perry. Yeah. Grant in all white, white pants, white tops, maroon numerals, and white helmets with uh, with the G, kind of a Georgia G on the side. Tigers with white pants, black tops, and black helmets. Once again, they hand it off to Perry. He's got a little room off that left side. He's going to gain, call it four, and it's going to be third down and a long six now for Grant. And Grant's kind of the new school I formation. They're in the shotgun. But they have two backs back there, and, and they're running the lead and the, uh, the power uh, out of 21 personnel, which means there's two backs and one tight end. Uh, as, as they go to 22 personnel here, they've got two tight ends and two backs. Under nine minutes to go here in the first quarter. This is Grant's first offensive possession. The Tigers three and out on their first possession. Perry from the shotgun. High snap. It's kind of bobbled and Hedrick's going to go down at around the eight-yard line. That's going to be a loss of about six on the play, fourth down and 12, and Grant's going to swap swap out personnel. They're going to have to punt this away out of their own end zone. Yeah, center had a guy lined up over him, and they created the high snap there, and there's nothing worse for a quarterback is having a high snap, especially on third down. Uh, and Neville defense did a good job getting off the field there. Uh, creating this punt. Hopefully start with good field position here uh, after this punt. I think this is Connor Phillips. Snaps low, but it's – man, that went underneath the center, <laughs> I believe, as it's going to be downed and rolls to the Grant 38-yard line. You know, my buddy Jeff Joyce would be, would like that if he's watching because <laughs> way, way back when we were doing Sterlington games in the early 2000s, Poor kid from Sterlington hit, hit a punt, and it almost it de-helmeted the deep snapper. And I said he had rifled it down the field, and it cracked Jeff up. He, couldn't, he, he didn't get back to the booth, I think, until like the second quarter. All right, anyway, first and ten Tigers. Fuller going to turn, hand this to Reitzel. Makes a cut at the line of scrimmage, breaks a tackle around the 35, and keeps moving forward. Out to the 29-yard line. That's going to be about a yard shy of a first down. Nice play on first down from the sophomore Reitzel. Yeah, Neville offensive front right there. The, the big men got a big push. Uh, and that's what you want to see uh, is that offensive line moving bodies around and, and being able to run the football. Reitzel remains in the backfield. They're going to turn, hand it to Jakeen. He's going to get a couple. It's going to be enough for a sonic first down. And that's going to move the chains. The Tigers have a first down. Yeah, good short yardage play. Uh, ran it up in there. Good job by the running back finishing the, the run there for a, a good first down. Keep the chains moving. Uh, brings up first and ten with this Tiger offense. Another handoff here. Reitzel bounces outside. He breaks a tackle at the 25, cuts upfield. Nice tough finish to that run as he gets to the – Sticks. It looks like he's going to have another Tiger first down. Yeah, good job right there. He kind of bounced it outside. It was kind of meant to go up inside. He bounced it out, got to the sideline, and uh, was tackled right there at the first down marker. Uh, create another first down for this Tiger O. Ball's at the 18. Another handoff here. Reitzel trying to weave his way through traffic in the middle of the field. He's going to get out to the 14-yard line. Be a gain of Three on first down, second down and seven now. As the Tigers swap out a few players, Tardashi Lemons comes in for Reitzel. Along with Tamari and Wade to the receiver on the far side. You got Vaughn in the slot and Hanlon here to the near sideline. This is going to be a run, an option. For Fuller, as he keeps it himself, he's going to have another sonic drive in first down as he gets it inside just right to the five-yard line. It's going to be first and goal Tigers. As Braden Blade, the guard, has to come out. He lost his, uh, lost his helmet. And out comes, I believe that's Corbin Falk to replace him. 
at that right guard position. Tigers driving, looking for their first points of the game. Fuller takes it himself, and he's going to be in for the score. Touchdown, Tigers. Fuller from five yards out. Yeah, good job by the Tiger offense. Came out a little sluggish on our first drive. Had a good punt. Defense held them. We start with good field position. Run, run the ball straight down the field. Uh, two quarterback runs in a row. They were still playing uh, two safeties on the play before that, and you got to run the quarterback right there. Yeah. They got a guy that can't account for him in the running game. So, um, and, and then Fuller was able to put it in on a short run there uh, against the Grant defense. Put six on the board for the Tiger offense. The Tigers going to break out of this? No, there's a high snap. Sapanero, he pitches it back to Reitzel, and this is going nowhere fast as the bad snap kind of fooled that off the swinging gate, so the extra point is no good. Six and nothing Tigers, 5-16 to go here in the first quarter. We'll be back in 30 seconds with more Neville Tiger football. I'm Dr. Scott Shelby with Family Solutions. When you hear the words Family Solutions, you may not know that we're a comprehensive, strength-based counseling and psychiatric clinic. Family Solutions provides psychiatric care, individual and couples therapy, child and adolescent counseling, psychological testing, medication management. We also provide occupational therapy, physical therapy, speech therapy, and ABA therapy in one convenient location. For more information on how we can help your family today, visit FamilySolutionsCounseling.org. Welcome back to the Family Solutions broadcast booth. And the Tigers take it 38 yards on their second possession. Capping off with a five-yard Amon Fuller touchdown run. They lead Grant 6-0 early here in the first, well, 5-16 to go here in the first quarter. Sergio Ilyev said to kick it away. Puts a leg into this, angles, angles it into the end zone, and that's good to see as I think Sergio's finally figuring yeah. out where to put that foot on yeah. a football, and that's a couple of touchbacks on his last few kicks. Yeah, we, we've really seen him improve week to week. You know, he, he started uh, to American football. Uh, I think it was pretty new to him. Uh, when, when he came here and started the first game. and he's, It was he's, very new. It was, yeah. Very he new. played soccer. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> the other football. Right. But, European but it, football. But he's gotten better and better each week, and it's good to see you, uh, the kicker to be able to put it in the end zone like that because that's one more play you don't have to defend in a game. All right, first and ten for Grant. After the touchback, the ball's at the 20-yard line. Same formation from Grant. Quarterback in the shotgun. He's going to turn, hand it to Perry. He's going to have a couple, and that's it. Second down and eight now for the Cougars. Yeah, you know, this Tiger defense last week, we saw them create turnovers. I believe we had two scores yeah. on, on uh, defense last week, so it would be good to see them continue that um, in, th in this game tonight. Hedrick walks to the line. Grant comes out in this double tight end set. You see the fullback next to him is Matthew Kristen. They're going to turn and hand it. Is that Kristen or is 37? That might be 37. That's Chandler, Caden Chandler. Sorry. He's got the carry there. He doesn't gain a yard. Yeah, good to It'll see. It'll be Bre third down and eight. Number zero, Bre Breland Robinson. Back in linebacker. Yeah. He was in on the tackle right there, and he, he had had an injured leg this whole season. So uh, he's a good addition to this Tiger defense. Yep, you got Breland and Vincent Butcher in at linebacker for the Tigers. Tigers kind of showing blitz as they bring Breland to the line. On a turn, throw the quick slant. Hedrick was looking for Keith McKinney. Throw is a little bit low, and it's going to be incomplete. It's going to be fourth and eight. And I would assume that Grant's going to punt this football away, and they will. Yeah, the Tiger defense sold out on the run right there. Uh, you know, Grant is in. Had to call the right play. Yeah, they, they got a tight end and two running backs. So, uh, we're loaded up in the box, stop the run. It creates one-on-one -on -one, uh, outside, and it looked like they just ran a little RPO there, and the quarterback was barely able to get the ball out. 
Uh, and it wasn't a great throw, and he had good coverage there by the corner for Neville also. Yeah, I think that was Dakota Newton on the coverage. All right, Reitzel standing at his own 45. Nice punt here by Phillips. It's going to be taken around the 38 by Reitzel. He's dancing around on the far sideline, finally pushed out of bounds at the Neville 47-yard line. And great job by Reitzel catching that punt. If he lets that ball bounce, uh, that ball was going to roll out, uh, had, has the possibility to roll out uh, for some extra yardage for Grant there. Uh, good job, and he, he made a, a nice return uh, there. To, it looks like the Tigers are going to start this drive on the 47-yard line. Yeah. Looks like the nose of the football is on the 47. 47. Yeah, so – We'll get with uh, Jay Trailer, who's doing all of our stats. All right, there's the handoff again. That's Reitzel as he gets it across the 50 to the Grant 49-yard line. Second down and six now for the Tigers. Gain of four on that last play. Actually, that wasn't right till that was Nichols in on the carry. Once again, they hand it to Nichols. Kind of slips in the backfield. Falls forward for a yard or two. It'll be third down and four now for the Tigers. Yeah, Nichols had the inside run, and he looked like he was going to make a cut, and his foot just slipped out from under him there. Uh, turf monster may have got him. He's the lone back next to Fuller. Tigers have two wide to the near side, one to the far. Fuller takes it himself. He's got the first down and a little bit more out across oh. the 40. He goes to the 38. Looked like a – a little cartwheel, cartwheel or, that, yeah, yeah, that he got through. Mm -hmm. uh, that was one of the offensive linemen. It's pretty impressive. Uh, so they <laughs> get it. Uh, another Sonic drive in first down. Two twenty-five remaining here in the first quarter. The Tigers are leading six to nothing, but driving here. And Stewart, you can see they're playing cover two uh, behind this. That's that safety's back. Uh, it creates an option for the quarterback to be able to run the football. Fuller looking to throw. He's going to dump it into the flat to Nichols. He makes a man miss at the 35 and drags a couple of Cougars out to the 27-yard line. That's going to be another Sonic on North 18th Street first down for the Tigers. And and great great job right there. That's basically the glorified uh, halfback toss. Mm -hmm. Get the get the ball out on the perimeter. They've got two safeties back, uh, so so. We, it, we can work with our quarterback and our running back in the run game and the passing game. Yeah, Grayson Elias, number 41, grabbed the back of Nichols' jersey and got drug about four yeah. yards. Yeah. All right, first and ten Tigers. They're going to bring Vaughn in motion. They hand it to Nichols. As he runs to the left side, he's going to have a couple. Call it four. It's going to be second down and six now for Neville. Yeah, a minute and 17 and counting here in this first quarter. <clears throat> it's going fast. You know, we're running the football. Yeah. Uh, both teams are. Um, and, and this is two extended drives for this Tiger offense. Want to finish this one with points. Trips receivers to the far side. Fuller being chased. He's still looking downfield. And he completes the pass as he found – <clears throat> Javari Lockhart, who was kind of running with Fuller. Yeah. He was trailing his quarterback. He's got a first down as Lockhart's out of bounds at around the 12-yard line. Yeah, good job by the receiver. You know, the, the protection broke down. Uh, the routes have to change, and, the, and the, they have to know where the quarterback's going and uh, and try to get open. It becomes backyard football, and Fuller and the receiver did a good job of hooking up there for a first down. Fuller. Hands this to Nichols. He's got room on the left side, and he's in for the score. A 12-yard touchdown run for Jalen Nichols, and the Tigers have a two-touchdown lead. Yeah, good to see this Tiger offense get going. The first drive, it looked like they were still on fall break. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> the last two drives have been crisp and uh, well executed. So, uh, good job. Makes it uh, 12 to nothing here, pending the, the point after try. Yep. Looks like they're going to line up in the traditional field goal. Yeah. They, I think uh, they, extra point. Uh, Sampanera to hold, deal to kick. Snaps back, it's good. The kick is up. 
and it's good. So with 47 seconds remaining in the first, Neville 13, Grant nothing. We'll be back in 30 seconds with more Neville Tiger football. When Neville Nation craves delicious fast food, there's only one place that comes to mind, Sonic Drive-In on North 18th. Whether it's a breakfast toaster on your way to work or school, one of the many lunch combos, a mid-afternoon Route 44 cold drink, a pre-game popcorn chicken, or a post-game Sonic Blast, the Sonic on North 18th Street has you covered. So drive through or park and wait for a friendly car hop today to find out why our Sonic is the Sonic on North 18th Street in Monroe. It's definitely Tiger approved. You see the kickoff team ready to take the field. After that 12-yard touchdown run by Jalen Nichols, Sergio Ilyev leads his squad out to kick this away. Back deep for Grant. It's going to be number nine, Landon Friedu. You have McKinney. And Perry are the upbacks. Here's the kick. Another one. That's gonna might be returnable as Freedu takes it around the seven yard line. He's got some room in the middle of the field and he's finally brought down. Nice return there by Landon. As he gets it out to the 35 yard line, and that's where Grant will take over. For their third possession of the football game. Thirty-eight seconds remain here in this first quarter. Neville leads thirteen to nothing over Grant. We appreciate everybody tuning in on Sunday ninety-eight point three. Justin punching all the buttons for us back in the SMG studios. Here's Hedrick. He puts a man in motion. He's going to fake the pitch and gets into the middle of the field. And he's still fighting for yardage. He might have a first down. I think he will. Out to the 45 he goes. That's going to move the chains for Grant. Yeah, good job by Grant. They, they faked the, the pitch. Yep. Uh, Neville's defensive front has been doing a great job of getting uh, big-time penetration mm -hmm. against this Grant offensive line, so they, they got their eyes to move. You take one, one step and you're out of position and, and it forced the running lane there for the quarterback to get 10 yards and a first down. Hedrick looking to throw and takes it himself, runs back to the left. He's got a lot of running room and he's going to be forced out of bounds at the Neville 27-yard line. Yeah, and the quarterback uh, is pretty swift on his feet. Yeah. Um, that's two runs in a row. That time it was a sprint out, uh, try to throw the, the – out route, whatever. Yeah, but it was covered. It was covered, and we, we got out of our lanes, and he saw he saw a lane, and he, he took it, kind of cut it back across the field and um, ha had a big run there uh, from the now, quarterback position. That big run brings us to the end of the first quarter. After a quarter of play, Neville 13, Grant nothing. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Stay tuned. Mama DeLuca's pizzas are custom made, fresh to order right in front of you. We offer three different sizes of pizza, 9, 12, or 14 inch. Mama DeLuca's pizza is prepared to your order. The pizza cooks in less than three minutes. We have 16 different toppings to choose from, eight unique sauces to complete your pizza. In addition to pizzas, we offer to our customers boneless wings with your choice of a dipping sauce. Mama DeLuca's pizza offers delicious garlic parmesan breadsticks, freshly made to order pasta bowls. We're Mama DeLuca's pizza in the subway on Lammy Lane, and we hope to see you soon. As we return, you see the crowd here at Bill Ripple Stadium here tonight in this fall break matchup. Stuart Shelby, Robert Lane, Jason Ewing here in the Family Solutions broadcast booth. Actually, Jason Ewing is our Marion State Bank sideline reporter. And, Jason, let's check in with you down there. It's, you know, school's out. Looks like student section's kind of light it's a little down slim. there. But uh, – Starting slim. to fill in. Starting to fill in. Crowd starting to fill in. But nope. Brody Watley. Brody got a little excited. He, he's going to get swapped out there as Jaden Webb comes back in. And, uh, and I have noticed we, we've got lots of 
players subbing in and out. So we're playing a good mix of Tigers. Yeah, and it's trying to run a lot of guys in and out. Here in this one, five yards, step step off, makes it first and five now for Grant from the Neville 22-yard line. Hedrick puts a man in motion. He's going to run it himself. And nice hard run out to the 20. He'll get a couple. Yeah, it's going to be close to a first down. It looks like he's going to be a couple, couple yards, yards short. short. Yep. Yep. Second down and two now for Grant. Looks like Grant's going to try to utilize this quarterback's athletic ability. Yeah. Uh, that's three runs in a row. I don't have his height weight, but he, he's, he looks like a pretty solid yeah. young man. And, and he runs the ball hard. Yeah. Now they go trips receivers here to the near sideline. Tigers showing blitz. Hedrick looks to the sideline, change the play. Three seconds on the play clock. They're going to have to get it off, and they do. They're going to turn and hand it to their big fullback. He's going to have the first down. That's Caden Chandler on the carry. He gets it out to the 15-yard line of Neville, and that will move the chains for Grant. And Grant's found a little uh, wrinkle. I don't know if they've made some adjustments there on the sideline in the running game, but the uh, first couple of drives, it was tough for him. Yeah. Uh, this drive here, they've had a little little success moving the football. Um, we'll see how this drive continues. You know, Grant, this is a team that took Franklin Parrish to the wire. Yeah. I mean, yep. it was a, a last second. 19 missed a, to 17, I Missed believe. a last second field goal yeah. uh, that would have won it for him. All right, there's Hedrick. He's going to turn, hand it to Perry, and Perry is <laughs> hit hard at the line of scrimmage. He might have gotten a yard, and they're going to say he did. Second down and nine. I believe that was number 90, Brandon Baker, in on the stop for the Tigers. Yeah, he got the in initial penetration to kind of blow that run up, and a uh, host of Tigers were there uh, to stop the running back there for a short game. This is the formation we see at – Fullback, they were looking to get to the fullback, and I believe if Hedrick had to do over again, he would have given it to him because Breland Robinson came yeah. out of like he was shot out of a cannon. Yeah, you took gets the back words in there out of the my sack. mouth. That's exactly what it looked like. He came out of nowhere. Uh, I believe he was untouched, and uh, I think they were trying to get the one-on-one -on -one maybe fade uh, yeah, to the, on the field, play action. Yeah, to the field over there, and, and the quarterback did not have a chance to, to even get set. The legal formation was the call. There was a flag on that play. The Tigers uh, declined it after the, after the sack. It's going to be third down from the 20. So a loss of six on that one. So it's third down and 15 for Grant here. Their deepest possession of the night. Hedrick keeps it himself here. He's going to get a couple of those yards back. Only about three. Out to the 17-yard line he goes. It's going to be fourth down and 12, and it looks like the Grant Cougars are going to try a field goal here. Connor Phillips trots out with his tee. They're going to place that tee at the 24-yard line. So this will be a 34-yard field goal attempt. Snaps back. And the punt, and the kick is blocked. Blocked. I believe that was 94. Tatron Hanley. Was it? It was 90, yeah, 94. Oh, it was Jaden Webb, Webb that got yeah. it or, or Hanley? Yeah, so I don't know if we got that on the – Replay, did we get it? Let's see here. On the that's the last play. Let's see if we can't find that on the Parker Alexander replay. Hey, tonight's first half is brought to you by our good friends, the Fox at Sleepy Hollow Furniture. They're on the corner of Ninth and Louisville. So after the field goal was blocked, the Tigers keep the zero on the board. 
John Michael Sampanero comes in for a few plays, and he promptly pulls it down and runs it himself out across the 30 to the 32-yard line. That'll be a sonic drive-in first down. Yeah, good patience there by John Michael. Uh, he, he ran the fake, uh, and then he let the play develop. Let your blockers get out in front of you, and, and there's no rush. You know, yeah. Let the play develop and, and then pick your hole and go, and that's what he did there. Sampanero, that's Tardashi Lemons to his left. Samp puts in, puts Dotson in motion. He pulls it out of Tardashi's belly, runs it himself. Nice gain. Looked like it, it was almost stopped for a, in the backfield there for a loss, but he was able to wiggle out of it, get it out for a gain of six. It's going to be second down and four now for Neville. Ball's placed at the 38-yard line. At their own 38-yard line, that is. Yeah. 8.07 to go here in the first half. Tigers leading 13 to nothing. John Michael's still in there. Uh, see what he can do here. Another run. Makes a move at the 40. He's to the near sideline and lowers a shoulder into a defensive back from Grant. Falls forward to the Grant 45-yard line. Brought a... Roar out of this Tiger crowd. And that's going to be another Sonic on North 18th Street, first down. Yeah, good good finish right there by John Michael. I mean, that's how you run the football. John Michael looking to pass. He's going to pull it down again. He's still looking to pass. and But he finally decides to run it forward. He's going to get a couple, but that's it. Second down and eight now for Neville. Yeah, good job. He got, had a little uh, uh, little pressure there by the defensive front. John Michael uh, got out of there. The problem was all of his receivers were to the field. Uh, he, he came to the Neville sideline to the short side, and uh, there was nothing going, and uh, he, he was able to get a couple of yards on the quarterback scramble there. All right, here's the handoff. Tardashi makes a move, and he's in the open field. He's at the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown, Tigers. And I tell you, every time 16 touches that he football, makes play. Make, he makes a big play. Yeah, and, and he's fast. And once he gets into the open field, you're not touching him. So, <laughs> uh, he, he ran away from the guys there. So, good good run there and good finish. Uh, makes it 19 to nothing, pending this extra point try here by the Tigers. Yep, deal set to – Kick it. I mean, Tardashi is small in stature, but blazing fast. Here's the kick. It's up, and it's good. 20 to nothing, Tigers. 6.40 to go here in the first half. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Stay with us. Do you suffer from frequent back or neck pain? Were you in an accident and can't get rid of those constant aches? Maybe you're someone who deals with chronic migraines and tension headaches. It might be time to see how Martinez Chiropractic can help you. The goal of Martinez Chiropractic is to reduce or eliminate pain in just a few sessions using the latest in chiropractic technology. Don't suffer in pain another day. Call Martinez Chiropractic today at 318-654-4310 or see him in person 1828 Tower Drive in Monroe. Welcome back to the Family Solutions Broadcast Booth. Tigers punch it in for the third score. Tardashi Lemons from, what was that, about 40, 42 yards? From somewhere around in there. Let's call it 42. Jay, yeah. 40, 42. Well, See, right. there we go. Yeah. Keegan was right. There we go. I mean, we got uh, down there punching the numbers as Sergio puts a Leg into this one, and it's going to be returned from the goal line. Comes Landon Friedu. He's wrestled out of bounds across the 20 at the 22-yard line. You know, Grant drove it down a little bit, got into Tiger territory, and had a field goal blocked. That's been the only time that, that they have really threatened yeah. here in the first half. Now the Tiger defense 
has probably gotten a challenge after that drive from Coach Collins to keep that zero well, up there. It's the been deal. a couple of straight weeks of zeros. Exactly. You want to keep the intensity up. In games like weeks like this, no school, different routine, mm-hmm. uh, you know, you got to keep your intensity because the playoffs are going to be here before you know it. Yeah. Uh, and, and you can't turn the switch on and off. You want to continue to play. We got a zero last week on the board uh, defensively. Uh, didn't give up a point, and that's what your goal is tonight as well, obviously going forward. There's Hedrick. He's going to hand it to Perry. He doesn't have any room on the right side. As Brandon Baker and friends drop him for a loss of one. Second down and 11 now for the Cougars. Yeah, good job by the defense. They, they're just trying to run the, the speed sweep there, and the Tiger defensive front is – is fast, and, and they, they forced that ball to the sideline and uh, tackled the man for a short loss there. It's again a man in motion. As Hedrick's looking to throw, he's getting chased. He escapes the pressure and slides down after a gain of about three. Looks like Tytron Hanley did a good job of avoiding a late hit right there. As he he wasn't, I don't think he was expecting Hedrick to slide here. Right. You look at this on the Parker Alexander replay. As he was coming, and then yeah, smart good job of picking him up, and a good job by Cam Riley, number five, the cornerback. Uh, they tried to run a little speed option fake and, and make a big play, and he covered the receiver. Yeah, uh, it was a one man show, and he and he covered the guy and created that play. Uh, third sure down and Phil, third down and eight for Grant. Now Grant's MO is hold on to the football. They want to yeah. want to eat this clock up. Hedrick once again looking to pass, and the backside pressure is going to get him. Brody Watley brings him down at the line of scrimmage. It's going to be fourth down and eight. And on comes the punt team for the Cougars. Yeah, Grant has just not been able to handle this front four for the, the Tigers. They, they've they been in the backfield uh, pretty much the entire night. You know, last drive they had a few few big plays, mm-hmm. um, the quarterback running the football, and, and since then it's been uh, – and, and earlier in the game, it, it, the Tiger defensive front has just gotten penetration and, and gotten back there, creating havoc. Jakeem Reitzel standing at his own 45-yard line as he awaits his punt from Phillips. Or actually, that's not Phillips. A nice punt. That's the quarterback, Hedrick. Jakeem picks it up around the 28. Is it? Can he get to the corner? He has. He's at the 50, the 40. Is he going to stay in bounds? He finally gets pushed out of bounds at the Grant 26-yard line, but a flag flies in late. It's yeah. sitting around the 30-yard line. That might be a block in the back. Well, it's going to be unsportsmanlike. It was about 20 yards behind the play. A crackback block, yeah, maybe. Neville defender cleaned up. Looks like two Grant players there on the sideline. Uh, you know, you got to keep it bad as you want to you know, as you're yeah. a football player. Uh, you know, we've gotten a lot stricter rules. Uh, as you see on the replay here, it was a race. Uh, here comes yeah, Jakeem around that right end. I don't know if we're going to no, get it. On the replay, there it's it is, right, right there. there. Yep. 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 Grant player was kind of running along the sidelines yep. and and uh, cleaned up was a very good term. Yep. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Jason. <laughs> he put a little shoulder into him. That's going to back it up fifteen. We used to call it getting laid out. <laughs> <laughs> All the way back to the forty-seven yard line of Grant, and the Tigers will be first. Have first and ten there. They just lose the. They lose the uh, – because it was during the play. It wasn't a dead ball foul. So the Tigers have four minutes, ten seconds. And the football here. John Michael Sampanero hands this one off. That's Jalen Nichols fighting for yardage. A flag comes in at the end as Tyler Brown's helmet comes off. He's going to come out for a play, and he's re- replaced by Benny McNabb as we await this penalty. Would like to say hi to the McNabs. Kevin and Missy, they're down in Houston. Missy's working on treatment. We definitely send our prayers with them as that penalty is going to be against Grant. They'll step this off at the end. 
of the play. Yeah. Uh, this is going to end up being – I say it's a hold against Grant. That's really what – or a – I don't know. Is it, it hands it, to the face? It may have been hands to the face. Maybe so. Yeah. Either, hands to the face. Okay, yeah. hands to the face. That's generally how your helmet pops off. I don't know. Nowadays, it's yeah, like there's yeah. one every drive. Somebody's helmet pops off. It puts the ball at the 32-yard line of Grant. Clock now running after the step off. That's another Sonic drive-in on 18th Street. First down. Nichols now to the right of Sampanera. Thomas Campbell, there the up back, definitely probably playing with a heavy heart here this evening. The loss of his grandfather earlier today. Tigers might have to take a timeout. Oh, they're going to snap it. Sampanero looking to throw. Rolls to his right. Tries to float it. He was looking for Zeeland Young, and it was just a little bit too high, and that falls incomplete. And I tell you, Zeeland, Zeeland Young is a sophomore. Yes. Number 13. He looks the part. Uh, it's good he's to see long. Him out there. He's fast. Yes, yes. And uh, hopefully nothing but good things to come for that young man right there. So the incompletion makes it second down and 10 for the Tigers. Clock stop with 317 remaining here in the second quarter. Tigers leading Grant 20 to nothing. Sampanera hands this one to Nichols. He's got blockers in front of him. He makes a cut at the 20, breaks a tackle at the 15, and he's in for the score. Touchdown, Tigers, 32 yards for Jalen Nichols as he gets in on the action. 26 to nothing, three minutes to go uh, before half. That's what you wanted to see. Yep. Uh, you know, other than the first drive that we had offensively, it came out a little sluggish. Uh, it, it's been nothing but good things. Uh, for this Tiger offense. So, uh, as we await the point after. Jake Deal for the point after. Snaps back. Kicks up. And it's good. 27 to nothing. Neville all over Grant here in the first half. We'll be back in 30 seconds with more Neville Tiger football. At Marion State Bank, we're not just a bank. We're your neighbors, your friends, and part of your community. With branches in Marion, Farmerville, Sterlington, True and soon to be West Monroe, we're excited to be growing alongside you. Whether it's opening that first savings account, buying a home, or planning for the future, we're here to guide you every step of the way. Don't forget about MSB Mortgage in Monroe. I'm Robert Lane. And I'm Ben Jones with Marion State Bank. And we live where you live. Marion State Bank, member FDIC and Equal Housing Lender. Tigers lining up for another kickoff as they've scored on their last four possessions. They lead Grant 27 to nothing. The last one coming on a 32-yard Jalen Nichols run. Don't forget, coming up at halftime, the Martinez Chiropractic Halftime Report will have the Net Tech stat line. It's Jay Trailer, Keegan Carlson down there compiling all of our stats. Kick by Ilyev is going to be taken around the four, at around the four by Fridu, who's still on his feet, still on his feet. And actually, that was a guy getting blocked as there was an extra little shove there at the end. There's yeah, a he, flag coming from the far side as I think that was Jeremiah O'Leary who was getting roughed up there at the end of that one. <laughs> yeah. Fridu's return got it out to around the th – I think the 30-yard line, but a little extracurricular activity is going to back this up. Yeah, I think that was – It was actually – That was Caden Chandler that was yeah. – that uh, took O'Leary to the ground yeah. after the after the play was over. And that's going to get a flag almost every time. Yeah, yeah. There was a little shove that was real late, too. Uh, yeah, in, in the middle. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I can't believe the ref on the other side. I mean, he's right in front I of know. him. He didn't throw the flag. I know. Well, you know, sometimes you make friends over there. That's right. He, he's got to deal with that sideline. Yeah, that's there, right. right. You're going to get the 
It's easier to throw it from the Neville sideline. <laughs> you really don't think that comes into account, do you? <laughs> <laughs> no. All right, first and ten now for Grant. After the penalty, it backed him up to the 15-yard line. Hedrick looking to keep it himself. He actually, I think that might have been a busted play as he was looking to pitch, yeah. but the the – Tiger defensive front was already in the backfield. Yeah, it's just uh, Tiger's in the backfield uh, every play now, and it's and it's moving fast uh, for for this offensive line. And uh, you can tell the speed of this defense is is something that they hadn't maybe seen yeah. quite uh, this year. So um, I think yeah. that was Sutton Lewis in on the stop yeah. there, who, who came in. Two minutes thirty seconds remaining here. Hedrick now splits three wide and only has the fullback. That's Chandler to his left. They're going to hand it to him, and Chandler has nowhere to go. No, that defensive front. Yeah, is Watley, Baker, Webb, and Breland Young yeah, were right there. Another uh, No gain on the play. They lost two on the previous play. It's third down and 12. Robert. Yeah, it's just penetration after penetration with this defensive front. I mean, it's – uh, probably the the best we've seen them play up front as a unit, uh, or to to me. Uh, yeah, they, they're they're getting uh, in the backfield every play. Kind of surprised the Tigers maybe hadn't taken a timeout. There's been no timeouts taken in this football game to this point. They probably take one after the, if they stop them here on third yep. down. Yep. Hedrick rolling to his left, looking to throw. He's getting chased, and and there was nowhere for him to go. Breland Robinson with his second sack on the night. And now, still no timeout taken. So, I guess. I think we wanted to work on our two-minute offense. Or We're not going to have two minutes. Or less than one minute. <laughs> or less, less than, than one, one minute, minute offense. Yeah. So, we do have all three timeouts. We'll see. That's right. They're going to have to punt this one with about 50 seconds left to go as the football's at the Grant 11. That's Hedrick, the quarterback's the punter. And now they're going to call a timeout. Maybe they're just trying to protect that for against the against that uh, I guess front. The Tigers might have been looking like they'd come after it. All right, yeah. timeout on the field. 44 seconds remaining here in the first half. We'll take a 30 second break. We'll be back. Tigers leading this one 27 to nothing. Sleepy Hollow Furniture and the Falk family proudly support our Neville Tigers. Just like the wide variety of athletics and academics Neville excels in, Sleepy Hollow offers your premium mattresses and adjustable bases. Every kind of home furniture and just in time for your favorite season, quality in-stock patio furniture ready for the big game. Come shop your Neville Tiger family at Sleepy Hollow Furniture. Thanks to Sean Hollister for that nice end zone shot. Snaps back to Hedrick. He gets his punt away. Little spiral down to Jakeen Reitzel, who takes it at the 38-yard line. He's trying to fight off some uh, would-be tacklers, and he can't do it. Nice job there from Grayson Elias of – Sticking, sticking with Reitzel, and he's going to be brought down on a maybe a one- or two-yard return. And the Tigers will have it with 30 seconds to go and all three timeouts from the Grant 42-yard line. Let's see Fuller back out there to captain this final drive of the first half. Amon looking to throw, looking deep. Lost this one high up in there. It's going to be a jump ball. Brody Watley was fighting with Isaac Isaiah McKinney back was, there. Can't come up with the catch. That was Hanlon. I mean, it's <laughs> Hanlon. <laughs> I say that. I don't know. It's, it's, a, it's the nine. He's 19. He's, Brody's 99. Yeah. Um, I guess. 
Bradley Hanlon and Brody, Brody Wiley. Wiley. I mean, it's Bradley and Brody yeah, I, I, yeah. Hanlon. Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> God, sorry. Second and ten. I'm on. Back to pass. That ball is taken in by Tamari and Wade. Makes a cut around the 40. He's still on his feet. Fighting for yardage across the 25. He's going to be downed around the 23 as the clock's going to stop with 10 seconds to go. Looks like Friedu's number helmet, that's number nine for Grant, comes off. Tigers are going to take a timeout here. We'll keep it here. Jason Ewing down on the sidelines getting ready for that halftime interview with Coach Jeff Tannehill as – you can see, if you're watching on the Neville Tiger Network, our director, Will Anders, aggressively pointing at us that, that uh, we're, we're live in the uh, Family Solutions broadcast booth. <laughs> so, uh, but, you know, let's toss it down to Jason. And Jason, you know, here this first half, this is pretty much what we thought it was going to be. You know, Tiger's in control of this one from the get. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, it's gone, you know, almost as scripted. Uh, you know, Tigers just a little too much uh, came out strong and you know, definitely wanted to assert the run and uh, did a good job doing that. All right, Tigers took a timeout. They've got two, two remaining. Ten seconds. They might have a chance to throw it down the field a little bit, maybe get a late field goal or try to go straight to the end zone. Should have at least two plays out of this one. Amon, back to pass. Throwing it deep. He's got Hanlon and nice – job defensively by the defensive back for Grant. I believe that once again was McKinney. Amaya just didn't quite get enough on that yeah. one. Hanlon was open towards the corner and it, he allowed McKinney to get back in there. Well, and obviously Grant is playing coverage with four seconds left here before halftime. Uh, you know, we, we gave a, uh, our receiver a chance to go get it. They had two guys there. Uh, wasn't, wasn't a terrible throw and uh, good job by Grant of uh, covering that play. Here it is, a 40-yard field goal try for Deal, and it's going to be wide left. No good, and that's going to be the last play of the first half. Tigers will go into halftime with a 27-0 lead. I'm looking for our Marion State Bank sideline reporter, Jason Ewing, and there he is, and I think – He's got Coach Tannehill for some halftime comments. Jason, we'll toss it to you. Hey, Coach, we talked before the game. You want to come out, get some fluid offense going, and uh, the Tigers definitely did that. Yeah, I thought well, our line came out really blocking well. Uh, you know, defense is still playing outstanding, man. Uh, we well, missed a couple opportunities here to score some more points, but uh, proud of the way we play. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. All right. Thanks, Jason, and thanks, Coach Tannehill. So, all right, Robert, you know, quick thoughts. The Tigers did what they wanted, needed to do here in the yeah. first half. Uh, it was the quickest first half I think we've had yeah. here thus far, but they lead this one 27 to nothing. Yeah, I don't know what the stats are as far as the running game, but we, we've eaten up a lot of clock mm -hmm. and a lot of yardage in the running game. Put up 27 points. Got to feel good offensively. Kind of started slow in our first drive. And like Coach Tannehill said, the defense has continued to play well. Uh, like they have all year. So all right, we will get in. Half. We will get into those stats presented by NetTech IT Services. We'll have that coming up later on in halftime. We'll also have a Tiger Beat for you. Uh, but on the radio side, go ahead and toss it over to Big Dave and Puffy for the SMG and the three one eight scoreboard show uh, for the halftime. There's some scores to update. We'll have scores for you too if you stick with us here on the network. So toss it to. Uh, Big Dave and Puffy on Sunny 98.3. Now, here at Neville on the Neville Tiger Network, the Bengals are going to about are about to perform and we're going to give you the Bengal Bell performance as well as the Neville Band performance here at halftime. So, we we'll, right now, we'll turn it over to the Bengals.
High School Tiger Band and Tiger Twirlers for your halftime entertainment. They will be performing the first and second movements of their 2023 competition show entitled Cosmos, featuring familiar melodies and themes from the Planet Suite by Gustav Holst. Drum major is Braden Winterman, and band captain is Chandler Johnson. Musical soloists are Andrew Clayton, A.J. Vaughn, J.B. France, Daniel Vidal, and Cameron Jackson. Guard soloists are Kirsten Winterman, Akila Sims, and Destiny Brown. Drum Major Braden Winterman is the Tiger Band ready. Proceed.
Let's hear it once again for the Tiger Band and Tiger Twirlers. Band directors are Marie Minifee and Tyler Swinefus. Guard staff is Bailey Meredith and Cesar Brown. We hope you've enjoyed this halftime entertainment. All right, welcome back here to the Family Solutions Broadcast Booth. 40, 27, I think. <laughs> what am I thinking? <laughs> 27. <laughs> yeah, we're here in the Martinez Chiropractic Halftime Show. We got a special edition of Tiger Beat. Hard work and dedication on and off the field leads to success. From last week, here it is. Rustin. But let's not let one loss get our spirits down because this week is homecoming and I know our Tigers are crushing it right now in the Bill Russell Stadium against the Peabody War Horses. Shout out to the student section fans for supporting our Tigers. Thank you for tuning into the Devil Tiger Network for some exciting Devil football. Go Tigers! Hi, I'm Coach Eric. I'm originally from St. Louis, Missouri. I currently teach English 1, and I am the new girls soccer coach. So how did soccer tryouts go? Soccer tryouts went great. You know, I was very impressed with the girls, and I'm excited for this season. And what are you hoping for this season? Um, you know, we're going to be a young team this year, but we have the talent, and we're striving for a good deep playoff run. Jeans. I like Crocs. <laughs> um, these big dirty forces and these clothes and shirts that don't fit y'all. Oh, when boys say baggy clothes, emo, <laughs> tight clothes, stack jobs, socks and sandals. Them Yeezy slides with them bubbles in them. Bad lace fronts. Oh, uh, them big red boots. Um, the worst fashion trend is those little bitty purses that people be wearing. Uh, they're like, like little as my pinky finger, and yeah, that's the worst fashion trend that I think. Um, the worst fashion trend is when people put them four braids in their head and look like little babies and it was really ghetto and I don't like it. And also, Adidas shoes. So yeah. Standing packs, the man person, that's all I got to say. <clears throat> the worst fashion trend is probably baggy pants, and that pants that show too much of your underwear. So fashion trend at its worst, probably in the 80s when I was in high school, tight roll jeans. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> Welcome back to the Family Solutions broadcast booth. High atop Bill Ruppel Stadium. 27. Yeah, 27 nothing your halftime score. Let's go over some scores from around the area. Washita Trails, Alexandria 20 or 14 to 10. Rustin up on Pineville 14 nothing. West Washita Trails West Monroe 42 to 7 East Ascension 
leads Walker 14 to 7. I don't think that's right. I think it's 0 to 7. I don't know. Uh, Tioga actually went up. They're up 14 to 6. It's their homecoming down there at the reservation. Holy Cross up on Brother Martin 13 to 7. Captain Shreve over Natchitoches Central 19 to 12. John Curtis leads Acadiana 14 nothing. Brulee over West Feliciana, I think 14 to 6, or maybe. Wasman leads Richwood 6 nothing. Sterlington leads Union Parish at the half 14 to 3. North Webster 21 Carroll nothing. North Dakota leads Evangel Christian 20 to 14. Huntington leads Woodlawn of Shreveport 22 to nothing. St. Thomas Moore 28, Northside nothing. Edie White also 28 to nothing. Down to Division Three, four. I don't think there's a score on that pine and meat game. Uh, Thirty-five nothing, Manny over Winfield. Uh, Fourteen nothing, Caldwell. Loyola Prep trails Darbo and Woods, fourteen to seven. Haynesville, fourteen, Arcadia nothing. Prescott, Arkansas leads Homer, ten to eight. Mangum leads Madison Parish, thirty-five nothing at the half. Harding leads OCS up in Arkansas, or I think they're playing in Monticello so at UAM, but they're uh, 24-14 Harding in the fourth quarter. I think they started that game at 6. 50-0 Delta, or Delta Charter over Sicily Island. 7-0 Peabody over St. Mary's. And that rounds out the halftime scoreboard. Uh, tried. Let's go over some halftime stats now. Brought to you by NetTech. They're a charter member. Right here in Monroe, Tigers with 258 total yards in the first half, 212 on the ground, 46 passing, no turnovers, and 14 first downs. For the Grant Cougars, they had 38 yards, 38 on the ground, no passing yards, no turnovers, and three first downs. Scoring summary in the first half, all started with the Neville Tigers. Well, I guess Neville's the only one that scored. So it would be the only. Yeah, Mon Fuller rushed five yards. The two-point conversion failed. Tigers led 6-0. That, that drive took six plays, 38 yards, and two minutes and 45 seconds off the clock. Tigers score again later in the first quarter. Jalen Nichols on a 12-yard run. J uh, Jake Deal with the extra point. Tigers up 13-0 after that seven-play, 53-yard drive. Took 3.09 off the clock. That, then Tardashi Lemons took it 57 yards. Jake Deal's extra point, good. Tigers lead 20-0. And to end out the second quarter, Jalen Nichols on a 32-yard run. 27-0, your halftime score right there. Amon Fuller in the first half is 6 for 4 for 46 yards. His longest was 19 yards. The leading rusher for the Tigers, it's going to be Jalen Nichols for two attempts for 16 yards. Isaac Jengaina. One for 11 tonight. Jalen Nichols, six for 61 yards, two touchdowns. That's rushing. There we go. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to give it back to Stewart, the voice <laughs> of Neville Tigers. <laughs> go ahead, Stewart. Good you job, know, Will. You know, it's been a it's been a it, fun. It's been one of those days. I think Will's been on fall break. Will has been on fall break. There's been a lot of fall breaking going down here. Yeah. Uh, but I have been though. <laughs> Look, uh, we're having a good time here that in the was a family solutions. I'm not gonna lie, I'm about here listening. That was just struggling. <laughs> it's not the best attempt, I'll Look, tell you. I'll be honest. You know, the we video boards down tonight. I've known mm -hmm. that we tell the truth, no matter what that truth is. The three of us could not do what you do on a nightly basis, but uh, that that was piss poor. <laughs> I appreciate the <laughs> honest truth. That's uh, constructive know, criticism. Uh, you know, uh, as we welcome everybody back on Sunday, ninety-eight point well, three. It all starts else. with that darn video board out there. That <laughs> never works. The video board is had its struggles today. It yeah. was its own fall break. Go ahead, give me a well. cards yesterday. Yeah. Go ahead, give me a call for that one if you want to. Also, all right. What we're going to do is allow Will to go back to his directorial uh, duties. <laughs> and we'll take it over from here, young man. <laughs> Thanks, Stuart. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's Sergio Iliev with the second half kickoff. It's going to get just short of the end zone, and Grant's going to take over on the 35-yard line. We really do love Will Anders here. He does a lot. He does a lot. So we do this 
lovingly. Second half is presented by our good friend Dr. Kevin Williams at Williams Orthodontics. <laughs> 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 As uh, it's all well deserved, yeah. ribbing up here. Yeah. Well, thanks, uh, Dr. Williams, there on Lammy Lane in Monroe, as well as offices in El Dorado. I was by there today with Dave, or, or the other earlier this week with Davis, getting his grill worked on. Hmm. All right, first and ten. There's Hedrick. He's going to hand it off to the fullback. He's got running room. He's out across the 45. He's going to be Ooh. hit hard at the 49-yard line, but that's going to be a first down for the Cougars. At, but going down on the play, got mixed up as the middle judge. Know, let's check yeah, on he, him as one of the officials he took a got shot. rolled up. And I think he is going to be helped off the field by Jason Dunnaman. Yeah, I want – I want to say he may have uh, gotten knocked out, it looked like. He might have gotten rolled up. Let's yeah. see here on the replay. As he's trying to get out of the way, and he couldn't, and he just got leveled. Who was that? that uh, but he's easing. Now they're going to have to change up the formation here as one of the officials is getting checked out. So. Make some adjustments, and here's Hedrick again. That's Chandler, the lone running back behind him. Hedrick, play action, throws a little pop pass, which is caught by Perry, and he is leveled yeah, you could by hear, Titron Handler. You can hear you that can hit hear up that here. that one up here. Yeah, that was uh, a good lick, uh, but a good play by the quarterback and a good catch there uh, <laughs> by, by the Grant receiver. Burley Watley re-enters the game. Tigers with four down linemen. That first down play is a gain of six. Second down and four now for the Cougars. Just underway here in the second half. Tigers leading Grant 27 to nothing. There's a snap. It's going to be Hedrick calling his own number. He's going to get across the 40 out to the Tiger 39-yard line, and that'll be another first down for Grant. Yeah, just running the power play there to the weak side. They went trips to the field. Uh, you try to remove a guy and then and then run the quarterback power <coughs> there to the to the weak side uh, to the boundary. And uh, good run there by the quarterback. Good hard run. Got got run down by the backside, but not before he got the first down. Grant's. I think Grant doesn't want to get to a running clock. They really – they don't snap the ball until it's under yeah, five seconds no. on the play clock. And it's not just this game. It's – All of them, yeah. Just all of them. All right, Hedrick again. Three receivers to the far side. He's going to hand it off once again, this time to McKinney. He's got a short gain. Call it a gain of one. It's going to be second down and nine now for Grant. Yeah, good job by the defense. The linebackers did a good job of holding their ground and making the tackle there uh, for a short gain. And like you said, it's, it, Grant's just trying to control the clock. Um, probably their second half goal is to, you know, not let Neville score and, and, and let Grant try to put some points on the board. And we would like to report that the official who was shaken up a couple plays ago is back out on the field. So – and now that's going to be an illegal procedure, as I believe that was Jake Glass, one of the far side receivers, left a little early. Back him up five yards. It's going to be second down and 14 from the Neville 44. Willing to bet that was probably a pass Or the 43, play. actually, the 43. That was probably a pass play called. He, was, know, he was, he was ready to He was going to get out of the gates, yeah. Now, empty backfield. They bring a man in motion. This is going to be a straight quarterback run. That's going to be a hold as a flag comes in in the backfield. But Hedrick was leveled by Connor Vinson and Vincent Busher. Yep. Quarterback did a good job. I believe the, the Neville defenders were there to make the tackle. He bounced <laughs> it outside, but 
Uh, it's been an interior uh, hole yeah, there on the on the inside. I believe as there's it is going to be a hold against Grant. It'll be a ten yard step off. I tell you, he's shifty. Yeah, yeah, he's a good he, player. He danced around through several holes before he finally got to the corner. But I mean, he's he's shifty. I would assume. I mean, the last few quarterbacks for Grant have been outstanding baseball players. Grant's got a strong baseball program down yeah. there. I mean, they do. Uh, it's baseball country. Well, that backs the that penalty backs the football to the Grant side of the fifty. It's on the Grant forty-seven. Second down and a a long way to go. Hedrick looking to pass, and he's not gonna. He decided to take it himself, but. Jaden Webb was there to grab him. He's looking for a horse collar yeah. tackle, but Webb, if we see it on this Parker Alexander replay, had him around the shoulder pads on the outside here. If you watch him, he grabs. Yeah. He might have had a little bit of the back of that jersey, yeah. but the first arm had the shoulder yeah. pads. Yeah. That could have gone either way. Yeah. Uh, the refs decided to hold the flag, and now that sack moves it. Back to the Grant 44. Third and 32 for Grant. Hedrick looking to pass. Getting chased out of the pocket. Still looking downfield. He's going to fire it down to... That's Jaden Moore, but it's going to be incomplete. Wouldn't have been close to the first down yardage. Yeah. But... Again, the Tiger defensive line was in the backfield, created the quarterback to have to get out of the pocket, and uh, they did a good job, uh, almost completed the pass there, but like you said, it was going to be yeah. way short. And the Moore was well covered, too. Yeah. It, it, was yeah. a, it was a good throw into a, a tight window, but Moore couldn't make the catch, and now Hedricks backed up around his own 32-yard line as he is set to punt this football away. Once again, Jakeem Reitzel. Set to return for the Tigers. He's hovering around the 17-yard line. This punt is going to be picked up at the 12. Reitzel tries to get to the corner, but he's forced out of bounds on the far sideline around the 21-yard line. And the Tigers will take over first and 10 on their first possession of the second half, Robert. Yeah, I want to continue uh, doing what we, uh, how we ended the first half is, is you know, good crisp drive, mm -hmm. running your offense, uh, want, want to score here, obviously. Yeah. Um, you know, it is 27 to nothing, seven minutes and 30 seconds left to go here in this third quarter, but uh, j just go out and operate your offense. Everybody get be on the same page. They're going to call it, say he was pushed out at the 20. So Fuller. Turns and hands this to Nichols, and not much doing. Might have gained a yard out to the 21, and that's it. Second down and nine now for Neville. Yeah, just ran right the inside. There's some big guys if you look on that Grant. <laughs> yeah, the three-man front, but yep. there, there's some big boys. Yeah, that, that time sit. it looks like the yeah. Neville, defi Neville offensive line just came off their blocks a little early there yeah. on the inside zone play, and uh, we'll see what the Tigers have up their sleeve here on the second down. Fumble. Another handoff to Nichols. Ball's on the ground. Let's see who has it. They say looks like the Tigers have recovered. The side judge came in waving his arm. That ball was fumbled forward. And now the clock has stopped as there's an injured Cougar laying around the 25-yard line. Yeah, we just fumbled the, the quarterback and running back exchange there. Yeah. Missed the mess point. Ball was on the ground. That's not what you want to see, you know, because that's stuff that, that we're creating, you, you know. Uh, yeah. It's nothing that, that Grant did. So, um, you know, fortunately the Tigers recovered the football and, and are going to keep this drive alive. I think the young man, I can't get the number of the young man down for Grant, but he was right in the middle of that scrum for the football. Yeah, and, yeah. and there was a lot of – People diving in. And he's got his helmet off, and they're looking at his right leg. I think Dr. Casey Sermon is down there attending to this young man. He 
I think that's number 99. That might be Cortland Ely. Yeah, that's one of the big defensive tackles there for, for Grant. All right, well, I'll tell you what. He's – let's see. Yeah. Are they going to try to get him up? No, they're getting him up now. The ball actually bounced. He was the first one there, and the ball bounced, and he kind of got turned sideways and then piled up on A nice round of applause here by fans from both sides. <coughs> And he is helped off the field, and we're about to be back to action here. It was a net gain on the play of a couple of yards. It's now third down and six for the Tigers as they bunch three receivers here to the near side, inside the hash. Single back. As Fuller's looking to throw, he's got Vaughn who retreats and now breaks free around the right side. He's going to have the Sonic first down. I thought I saw a flag or something come in there, but I don't think there's one on the field. My eyes were playing yeah. tricks on me, Robert. Vaughn's got yellow gloves, so uh, he and he was moving pretty quick. Yeah, that might have uh, been it. But uh, Vaughn. Good the, execution yeah. there in the passing game uh, by this Tiger offense. They get the first down, fresh set. They're going to get it back out to Vaughn, who's got running room. He's out across the 40 and is taken down by the the headgear around the 49. That's going to be another Sonic drive-in first down as Vaughn gets a breather. Yeah, and, and I love the play call right there, getting the ball to your guys, your playmakers in space. Yeah. Uh, that's a high percentage throw. You're out there, good block by the, the receiver. You create a one-on-one, and, and you get a first down right there. So great execution by the uh, Tiger offense there and good run by Fuller after the catch. Trendon Dumas. Now they're going to try to swing it out to him, and that's just high. As he was looking for Dumas yeah. off the motion right there, and it falls incomplete. It's going to be second down and 10 now for the Tigers. 6-14 remaining here in the third quarter. Tigers leading 27 to nothing. Yeah, just, just missed him a little high there and uh, had some space to run too. He was to the field, just a bubble screen again, and uh, we just barely missed him. Handoff to Nichols is going nowhere as nice pressure in there from Grant. Looked like Landon Valley in on the stop. The Tigers are going to lose a yard back to the 48, and it's going to be third down and 11. Yeah, that was just a – I don't know if we missed an assignment up front or, or what, but that was a uh, scrum there uh, at the line of scrimmage. and Grant did a good job of wrapping the – Neville running back up. All right, third and 11. Tigers dropping back to pass, and this ball is tipped. Trying to swing it out to Nichols, and a nice play by Grayson Elias. Getting his hands on the football, and the Tigers are going to have to punt it away for the second time tonight. Yeah, Grant brought pressure, and we were just a little soft on the – out of the tackle position, you got to go attack that guy, get his hands down. Uh, when when you got a free rusher like that, you know that they're going to jump, and and uh, you know they're not used to rushing the passer, so they're yeah. they're there to bring pressure. They're going to if they if they're going to get blocked, they're going to get their hands up. We had a play too. Yeah, it was set up. Yeah, punt by Deal is away, and it's going to be picked up on the far sideline as Freedu. That was an aggressive move right there, and yeah. he's a hit immediately as they were, like, racing towards <laughs> the free football over in front of the Grant bench. He's knocked out of bounds at the 30, let's say, or the 29-yard line of Grant. Yeah, I, I think it actually hit off his shins when the ball bounced that he was going to recover it. I don't know. Oh, we need to see that on replay. Uh, yeah, let's let's we can, we might play that replay again here in a minute. It was very close, but I, it looked like it hit him. All right. Well, either way, he was giving chase and he he caught it. It's good he hustle. Won. Good, it was good, good hustle. hustle play. Yeah. All right. First down and ten for Grant at their own twenty-nine yard line.
Grant, a tight formation here. They're going to hand it to Perry. He's going to gain about four out to the 34-yard line. Actually, five. Second down and five now for the Cougars. Once again, Grant not in a hurry, even though they trail 27 to nothing. Snaps back, and Perry is brought down in the backfield. He's going to lose a couple back to the 32. Make it third down and seven now for Grant. That's nice penetration there by the Tiger defensive line, and you've said it all night. They've really just yeah it's, dominated their line of their, their side of the line of scrimmage. Yeah, it's just Neville's defense up front is winning their one on ones, and uh, when when you are winning your one on ones, you're going to have a successful night, and uh, that's what we've seen out of this Tiger front uh, on defense. Another tight formation from Grant. They snap it again. There's Perry, and he is leveled by Brody Watley. Actually, that's Bradley Hanlon <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on the tackle for loss. He knows. I know. He's trying to work I it know. out. I, I, if I can flip it, I know. I mean, it's like I don't know. It'll work out in your mind. Freaky Friday, Perry Friday trap, the something like that. I don't know. Things are things are all yeah. o- over the place here. So back to the original line of scrimmage at the 29. It's fourth down and 10, and Hedrick is asking for an extra lineman. Nope, and he's back out there. He's like, please, I need a protector, and they got a good one right there. Big number 74, Caden Malvo. Delay a game. Now we got to delay a game. Going to back this up. Five yards back to the 24. Jakeen Reitzel standing around his 40. This might set a record for the most punts returned in a game we've seen yeah. this year, yeah. at least the 2023. Hedrick's punt is going to be taken on one hop by Reitzel at the 38. He's Going to have a small gain out to, well, they're going to say the 42. Gain, you know, return of four yards, and Tiger offense is back out there. And this is their second offensive possession of the second half. And, you know, kind of like that first possession in the first half, yeah. that offense kind of sputtered on the uh, coming out of the, the locker room. Yeah, we opened the game with a sluggish drive, and then we opened, the like you said, the – uh, second half of the sluggish drive. So hopefully, uh, this drive here we can get things going. Uh, you know, again, you want to leave this game feeling good about yourself. Yeah. Uh, with the win, obviously. Um, you know, it's all pending how you perform offensively here in in the second half to close this game out. With it's 2:42 left in the third quarter. Obviously, Grant is milking the clock. Yeah. Uh, even with you know, down 27 to nothing, so you're not going to get that many more opportunities. No. Um, you know, make the, the most of them. Half. Yeah, so make the most of them. Uh, go score a touchdown here and uh, you know, get, get the bad taste out of the last drive uh, out of your mouth. All right, here we go. Amon Fuller back out there. Looking to throw him first down. He spins out of the pocket, and it's almost – Went right through the hands of Tyler Dotson, and Bradley Hanlon almost had the carom and picked it up. But yeah, and it, we had we had two receivers right there next to each other. And yeah. I don't I don't know the the route combo or or anything there, but uh, we dropped the pass. Yeah, actually, it was it was a nice throw from yeah, Fuller. Yeah, it, it was a great throw, and and would have been a close to a first down, uh, or or a first down. But but Bradley almost caught the ball after uh, our receiver missed it. Okay, second down and 10 now. 
bring Vaughn in motion. They hand it off to Reitzel. He gets around the edge, and he's going to have a Sonic driving first down as a flag comes in late. Reitzel was out to the Grant 45, but let's hold it right there and see what this flag is. Thrown kind of way behind the play, but this looks like it might be going against the Tigers. Unsportsmanlike. Well, no, unsportsmanlike against Grant. So that'll tack on 15 yards to the end of this one. The Tigers will have it at the 30, first and 10. And what really has been a pretty clean game, except for there's been a couple of yeah, personal the, fouls on, on Grant's yeah, side. Yep. Yeah. And Neville had one uh, on, on the punt return where we hit a guy yeah, a little oh, late that's behind right. the play. That's right. Fuller. Hits Vaughn with a quick slant. He makes a man miss at the 15. He's at the 5. Touchdown, but it might be coming back as there's a flag lying around the 24-yard line, and that's probably going to be a hold. But I like the quick slant. That was a yep. great throw. Yeah, really well executed, uh, but looks like it's going to be coming back. Yeah, it might have been there on that right side. Van Martinez had his guy and, and pushed him yeah. to the ground. I don't know. But that's a sophomore right tackle right there who's really played well all season. Yeah. yeah. So that's going to bring it back. I say it was down the field. It's going to be bring it back to the 34-yard line. So it will be first down and 14 now for the Tigers. Yeah, that might be the first, like, quick slant I've seen us call yeah. this year. Yeah, and I don't know. That may be in an RPO, you know, where, you, yeah. where you're reading it. and uh, Again, but it was well the one we hit. Yeah. Dumas comes in motion. They hand this to Reitzel. Nice tough run. He needed 14 for oh, a first down, that's... and he got 13, and a flag comes in late. That's going to back it up at the end of the play. That looks like that one's going to go against the Tigers as well. Yeah, and and, and our guy just was finishing his block, um, you know, kind of like a Will Campbell. You'll see. I don't know if you'll see it here. Um, right here in the, in the uh, bottom of the screen. It's a face mask. Yeah, it's a face mask. Should be. Uh. okay. So Did they it's, call, this okay. is against Grant. Okay, they called well, good. it a. a Personal foul face mask, and that might have been the retaliation from getting his face mask pulled. Yeah, well, I mean, you I, saw. he was locked on him, and the Grant guy had had his face mask, but the Neville, def Neville offensive lineman just drove him into the ground, but but the Grant guy had him with two hands locked onto his face mask. I was thinking that we were going to get a unsportsmanlike penalty. Yeah. yeah no, the Grant guy actually pulled him down. Yeah, I yeah, got you. Mask. All right, so first down and 10, now from the Grant 11, Fuller. Rolling to his right, he's hit as he threw, as he threw, and uh, you know it looks like he was trying to roll, and he tried to cut his roll as Tamar and Wade was a little shaken up as he was trying to come back for that tip ball, and that's a ni another nice play. That's forty-one again. Yeah, we Grayson Elias, who's played well tonight for Grant. We've got to block the end man on the line of scrimmage right there. You got to go cut him or. Or, or, or hook him, allow the, the quarterback to get outside. We didn't do that. And uh, he put pressure on Fuller there and forced a bad throw. Did you all see Tyler Brown almost get an Oscar? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Key word was almost. Second down and ten now. This is a straight option play. Reitzel breaks a tackle in the backfield. Was able to push it forward to the seven. A well, gain of four. It's going to be third down and six now for Neville. They can't get a first down. Got to get it inside the the two. Now the Tigers taking their time. Well, it, the clock's not running as Reitzel was out of bound. Went out of bounds at the end of that run. 
They're going to turn and actually they're going to keep it. They go pitch it to Dotson as Fuller on the option. Pitches it to Tyler Dotson, and he's in for the score. That's the fifth different Tiger to score here this evening. Yeah, really good job uh, running the option right there. Really good execution by Fuller uh, and, and getting the ball on the perimeter there and getting it to, the, to Dotson, and he walked into the end zone there by the pylon, as you see here on the replay. It's a nice decision there by Fuller. Yep. All right, here's Deal for the point after. Snap by Lewis is back. The kick is up, and it's good. 34 to nothing is our score. Neville on top with a minute 22 to go in the third. We'll be back in 30 seconds. Stay with us. Winning is synonymous with Neville High School and Williams Orthodontics. Where the Neville Nation strives to finish strong on the field, court, or diamond, Dr. Kevin Williams and his staff share the same passion to deliver outstanding smiles to all patients in North Louisiana and South Arkansas. If you or anyone in your family are needing an orthodontic consultation, call the friendly staff at Williams Orthodontics to schedule an appointment so you too can be on the road to a winning smile. Williams Orthodontics says, Go Tigers! Thirty-four to nothing. Still a few Tiger faithful fans hanging out here at Bill Ripple Stadium. As we return to the Family Solutions broadcast booth. It's thirty-four to nothing. Neville Sergio Iliev ready to. Kick this away as Grant adds a man late to the formation. Back deep is Landon Friedu. He's done a good job returning punts and kicks, number yep. nine has. <clears throat> yep. He, he's played both ways tonight. He's going to have another chance here. He hauls this one in at the three. Goes towards the Grant sideline, and he's finally – Wrestled down at the 25. Another tough run there by number nine. And Grant will take over first and ten again. The closest Grant has come to put points on the board came in the, I believe that was the first quarter or early second. They drove it down inside the 20. Now a flag pops in. And that's going to be another unsportsmanlike maybe against Grant. And that's got to be frustrating for that Grant coaching staff. Yeah. <clears throat> it's, uh, you know, w when you're down 34 to nothing, you got to, you know, give credit to them for, for fighting. And, and I, I, be I believe they had it on the returner right there, number nine. He came off the field not very happy. Uh, yeah. And that may be his second unsportsmanlike. I don't know in high school if you're. If well, I don't. I don't know who they got. Yeah. Hopefully, they'll put it on another guy. Right, I don't want to see a guy get. Yeah, especially get, thirty-four get, to nothing. Yeah. So uh, after the twenty-five, and that was after the play. So that's going to add to the first down yardage. It's going to be first and twenty-five now. It'll be first and ten. All right, they they. All right, so it will be first and ten. They move the the chains back. So first and ten, and it's, they actually place the ball on like the fourteen yard line of Grant Hedrick, looking for the option, and there was nowhere to push it. Hedrick's down. After a gain of about a yard, second down and nine, he kind of popped out there at the end and kept going, but he was blown down. <clears throat> yeah, Neville's defense did a good job of, of forcing that ball uh, you know, to the outside. Hedricks planted his foot, tried to cut back against the grain, and there was more Tigers on their way. And, and uh, did Tiger defense did a good job of staying in their gap and, and playing defense how you should, you know, not over-pursuing there. 
Uh, we saw earlier Hedricks cut the ball back and had a big run early in the first quarter. He was trying to do the same thing there, and the defense just wouldn't allow it on, on that, that play there. Second down and nine. Hedricks has it. He's looking to throw, and the ball popped out. He what? McKinney was there. And I believe that was Juju Burns that came up and delivered a big hit. Yeah, and what they're going to call is a defenseless receiver on the Tigers. Uh, you, you, we came up with our shoulder. You no, see. it wasn't. It was Graves with the hit. Yeah, and but you've got to wrap up this year. Yeah, new, instead of just throwing a shoulder, you can't, you can't just come in and decleat a guy. Yeah. Uh, so it'll be a personal foul. It's unfortunate. I don't. I mean. Yeah. You know. I mean. I, I get it. I get it. But yeah. you know. So don't that's play football. It's going to be a 15-yard step off. And that'll give Grant a first down. That's going to bring it back out to the 29-yard line, and it'll be first and ten Cougars. Yeah, and it's a new rule that that coaches, players, everybody's having to get used to. Yeah, you know, you, you're going to have to coach it, but it, it you know, um, that's just an opportunity. I think Graves had him in his sights. Yeah, and, and yeah. Was I mean, it's trying to separate him from the football. That was a good def- defensive play. Yeah. All right, first and ten. There's a handoff to Perry. He's going to have about six on the carry out across the 35. Be second down and four now for Grant. And that's going to be the last play of the third quarter. So we played three here at Bill Ruppel. Neville 34, Grant nothing. We'll be back in a minute right after this it's tough being the king of the jungle you need the best fitness gear to stay on top of your game week in and week out that's why shasta only knows one place to shop fleet feet on Forsyth and monroe shasta knows that the staff at fleet feet can outfit you from head to toe in the latest and greatest brands shoes by hoka on cloud new balance brooks and more socks by belega and features apparel from lululemon fiori brooks and chicken legs will keep you feeling great while you're staying in shape. So, be like Shasta, stay fit, look cool, and shop local. Stop by Fleet Feet today. This is State Senator Stuart Cathy Jr. And four years ago, when you elected me, I promised to always fight for you in Baton Rouge. Fighting for what's right isn't new to me. I've devoted my life to serving my country and my community. It's been a privilege to serve you. Now, I humbly ask you to entrust me once again with your vote. Let's continue our mission of defending our shared values and advocating for a better future. Because honor and service aren't what people say, it's what they do. Well, they flip fields. Now Grant moving towards Forsyth Avenue. Hedrick's going to keep it himself. He's going to have enough for the first down, and another flag comes in. That might be a targeting on Butcher as Hedrick was getting tackled and Butcher yeah, came in with the shoulder. Or I think that was Julian Burns, number two. He came in from the free safety spot right here. Okay, Butcher was on the tackle, and then, yeah, yeah. Juju came in with the shoulder. That's right. Yeah. Well, that's going to tackle on 15 to the end of this one. And we just talked about it being a fairly kind of yeah. benign – Game penalty wise, and then all of a sudden uh, the laundry has started yeah. to fly. And you know, that's, that's fly. it's easy to watch that in slow motion and go, man, he shouldn't have done that. But that's hard to do. When you're playing free safety, and, and as you should, come up in there and make a tackle. Yeah. You're coming in. And the good thing is he led with his shoulder, not his head. Uh, he did, it did appear to be targeting just because he got tackled as he was going in there. But so an unfortunate penalty there for the Tiger defense. Uh, that's two in a row to keep this drive going. After Grant. the step off. The ball is placed at the Neville 43-yard line and try to hand it off to Perry, and there's nowhere for him to go. He's going to lose a yard as the entire defensive line was in on that tackle. Yeah, and I tell you, uh, Grant has done a good job tonight of not turning the football over. I don't know that there's been a turnover tonight. No, there hasn't. Um, On either side of the ball. So as much as Grant has, has gotten hit, uh, and and the defense wrecking havoc in the backfield tonight. Yeah. Grant's done a good job of 
of, of protecting the football and, and not you know giving the ball to Neville. So and that's the difference between last week and this week. It's thirty four to nothing. Whereas Peabody, we had two defensive scores off of turnovers. Actually, three. Three. Yeah, that's right. Another handoff to Perry, and man, oh. he got held up, and then the rest <laughs> of the defense. <laughs> Came in and got him. I mean, there's about seven Tigers on, in on the tackle right there. Yeah, they're going to be sore tomorrow. No gain on the play. Third down and 11 now for Grant. So, it's another third down. Let's see if the Tigers can not add to the end of a play here. Oh, and then... Couple of guys move for Grant right there. It's going to back him up five, and now it's going to be third and sixteen. Ball will be placed at the Neville forty-nine yard line. Yeah, and I'm betting it's an, that was another pass play. Uh, yeah, slot receiver up top. Was yeah, Grant it? doesn't throw it a lot. No, no, but it third and long. Yeah, you know, trying to hard count them to slow the rush down. And uh, receiver jump. All right, here's a third down play. Hedrick with a lone back to his left. Looking to pass, looking deep, and that's way overthrown. I don't think 14 even knew the ball was thrown. Jake Glass running down that far sideline. Yeah, the quarterback right there for Grant had the definition <laughs> of catch and throw. Get rid uh, of get it. Get rid of it. Yeah, throw the fade, and let's hope that it, it lands in our guys' hands. And it wasn't a bad throw, but just the timing was off. Yeah. And, uh, the, again, the, the Neville defensive front has done such a good job of pressuring the quarterback. It, it forced an early throw and uh, brings up fourth and long, and it looks like another quick kick uh, punt. The quarterback, you know. Is the punt. Yeah, it's not a true punt formation. It's it's more of a quick kick that uh, Grant does, and the quarterback, quarterback handles all the punting due to duties. Now we got a timeout Grant. Okay, a timeout on the field. We'll take one, two, 9.59 to go in this one. Neville leading Grant 34 to nothing. We'll be back in 30 seconds. In today's real estate market, you need an experienced team to navigate your buying and selling decisions. I'm Misty Hodge with Keller Williams Realty. Let my group use their combined 45 years. We know purchasing or selling a home can be a stressful experience, but not when you choose the Misty Hodge Group. Whether you're buying, selling, or investing, give us a call. 318-348-5945 or go to mistyhodge.com. That's M-I-S-T-I-H-A-J-J.com. We support this community and go Tigers. Robert. Here's another punt as uh, we come out of that timeout here from Grant. They're going to fake it, and they that's a successful fake as they've got a man streaking down the sidelines, and Jakeen Reitzel trips him up. They finally pull the fake. I believe that was number 10, maybe Jaden Moore. They slipped out down the far sideline, and the Tigers got caught napping on that one. And they set that up perfectly. Yeah, everybody's got an assignment. And, uh, <clears throat> you know, 34 to nothing, you're expecting them to punt it. Yeah. And uh, kind of lose your intensity and concentration. He let a guy fl uh, slide out to the flat right there, and, and uh, he was wide open. So, successful play. Uh, Grant's trying to score. Uh, that's, that's their goal. Nine minutes left to go in this game. Uh, and they've got the ball inside the 20-yard uh, line. All right, they hand this one off. That's 37, I believe. Chandler, he gets about a yard, and that's it. Second down and nine now. So this is the closest that Grant has been to the Tiger end zone. Coach Collins' bunch trying to keep the Cougars off the scoreboard. They throw a fade, oh, and it's going to be it. caught. Dakota Newton came in, tried for the pick, and he couldn't come up with it, and it's caught. 
by Jake Glass for the touchdown. <laughs> oh, wow. We had a – I don't know how the Neville – six. Yeah, the Neville safety just – I don't know how he didn't intercept it. Um, you'll see it here on the replay. He, he's right where he needs to be, and he just, just went straight it, through his arm. It's almost like he came with his arms to swat it down yeah. instead of turning his body yeah, and just for catch the catch. It. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, well, either way, uh, Grant has tacked on six points. They're trying to they they run this swinging gate formation as well, and they're trying to get some extra people out there. Grant going to go for two. It looks like they are, and they're going to option it to nine, and he's going to be tripped up short of the goal line, so the two-point conversion is no good. With 8.30 to go in this football game, it's Neville 34, Grant 6. We'll be back in 30 seconds with more Neville Tiger football. If you've lost a loved one through the fault of someone else, call Parker Alexander today or visit parkeralexander.com for more information or to schedule an appointment. Whether you're dining in or grabbing to go, at Nukes, we love to share great food, to delight with new flavors, to celebrate every bite. Join us at Nukes Eatery. All right, welcome back, everybody. Family Solutions broadcast booth. Grant had a couple of penalties and a and a fake punt. Yeah, and got it down there and an eleven yard toss from Hedrick to Jake Glass gets him on the scoreboard here in the fourth quarter. It's thirty four to six Neville. And this will be just the second kickoff for Connor Phillips. Kicked off the opening okay. kickoff in this one. And is this the second possession for the Tigers on offense uh, in the second half? No. This is a third one. Third. That's 20 back yeah, there for the two. Tigers. Jamarian Roberson as he bobbled the, the kick or the, the initial catch, but – he made up for it and then some as he gets it across the 50 out to the Grant 47-yard line. Yeah, good return there by the Neville returner. And uh, this offense, this will be their third possession of the second half. Yeah. Uh, there's 8.20 left in the fourth quarter. So, um, you know, Grant has done a good job in the second half of keeping the ball. It's been driven by penalties and a fake punt. 34-6 uh, to six, uh, the score right now. But, but offensively, you know, got to keep things going. You want to finish this game on a positive note. Yeah. Uh, so. Uh, we and now Grant is going to take a timeout here. All right, timeout on the field. We'll take one, two. Back in 30 seconds. Strong teams accomplish great things by working together. The Neville Tigers and Origin Bank know all about the value of teamwork and the positive impact it has within a community. These strong teams have joined forces to support the Salvation Army of Monroe, offering a helping hand to an outstanding organization that serves people in need throughout Northeast Louisiana. Origin Bank and Neville High School have strengthened our community for generations and are proud to continue to enrich the lives of others. Origin Bank, member FDIC. Well, during the break, Robert, our stat man, Jay Trailer, comes in and says that the Tigers move on to win this one. This will be the their 53rd straight district win. Yeah, since 2010? <clears throat> October the 8th, yeah. 2010, when we lost to Ruston in district. Pretty impressive. Sampanero trying to set up the screen but lemons fell down yeah he got tripped up there and they we, had it and set we had up a play yeah we had a play <laughs> we had it set up and, we, and it just turf three, monster got yeah, yeah, tardashi yeah, he, he reached up and grabbed him um we had all three of the offensive linemen out and and uh, if he catches that ball it's off to the races all right lemons in the backfield sampanero in at quarterback for the tigers Yeah. 
Simps going to turn, throw it. He's got a man. That's McCarty. And he gets a nice little run after the catch as he gets it across the 35 down to the 33, and that'll be a sonic drive in on North 18th Street. First down. Yeah, just ran the hitch there to the short side of the field. You know, softest coverage, shortest throw right there, and uh, McCarty did a good job of catching it and getting up the field uh, for a first down. Here's Lemons. He's got room in the middle. Couldn't cut out of that one, but he's got another first down as he gets it out to the 20-yard line. Yeah. Clock stops momentarily as they move the chains. Tardashi comes out, and Daryl Hubbard replaces him in the backfield. Tigers are starting to sub out some of the skill guys. Yeah. The, uh, Hubbard must be popular. The whole bench just got up the yeah. line. <laughs> They're going to give Hubbard a carry. He is going to be drugged down at the 17 as couldn't quite get out of the grasp of number six, Brendan Sloan. And now Hubbard is shaking up a little bit on the play. It's, he's not going to come. Yeah, it looks like he may have got his ankle. It's Darrell Hubbard, there. I'm saying, not Darrell. It's Darrell Hubbard. And now, Ben McNabb comes in to spell Taylor Quinn, who has done an outstanding job this, this year as yeah. the Tigers center. And this one off to Tardashi Lemons, he makes a move at the 10, and he's going to be in for the score. <laughs> that 16's got a nose for the end zone. And he takes that in from about 16 yards out. You watch this on the Parker Alexander replay. I mean, he is just shifty. They tried to get him from the backside and couldn't quite do it. Tigers tackle on six more, and that's Brooks Yerger out there to attempt this extra point. Snap is back. The kick is up. And it's good. 41 to 6. 628 remaining in this one. We'll be right back after a 30 second timeout. When Neville Nation craves delicious fast food, there's only one place that comes to mind. Sonic Drive-In on North 18th. Whether it's a breakfast toaster on your way to work or school, one of the many lunch combos, a mid-afternoon Route 44 cold drink, a pre-game popcorn chicken, or a post-game Sonic Blast, the Sonic on North 18th Street has you covered. So drive through or park and wait for a friendly car hop today to find out why our Sonic is the Sonic on North 18th Street in Monroe. It's definitely Tiger approved. Well, Tardashi Lemons gets his second touchdown of the evening. A little 16-yard scamper. Gets those six points back. The Tigers gave up on that last drive to Grant. It's 41-6 to six with 6.28 to go in this one, Robert. Yeah, good job by the offense right there coming out. <clears throat> Only the third drive there in the second half. And... Uh, you know, finishing that drive with points uh, with Lemons, another big play. Yeah. You know, every time he touches the ball, he had a run uh, earlier in that drive that had some big uh, big chunk yardage in it, and uh, he's got some speed, and uh, he, he, like you said, he's got a nose for the end zone. All right, here's Ilyev. It's taken in around the 10-yard line this time by Freedu. And this time he just can – managed to return it out to the 20 before Tiger coverage team was able to run, get him down. Yeah, and there was a host of Tigers there flying down the field. Yeah. And, and number nine for Grant, he, he's uh, he's returned a lot of kicks tonight, and um, and I believe he's played uh, both offense and defense. Yeah, he and he's – down there talking to one of his coaches yeah. on the yeah. sideline. Uh, he's got he's frustrated, but yeah. a, a tough young man. You know, and Grant, you know, to be the they're one of the smallest schools in yeah. in this in the Division Two now, but yeah. in 4A. They're in Grant Parish. 
But they brought a nice band. They've got a, a decent yeah. Uh, yeah. amount of fans there. And this now a flag is going to be delay a game against. Looks like we got a new quarterback. Grant, in. yeah. Grant. And is that number back. number zero? Is that? I'm trying number to get four, the, get the number. What's the, if, I don't know if Jason's down there. If he can yeah, find the six, maybe it's eight. I think either or six eight. or eight. Yeah. yeah, I think it's eight. I think it's that's it, number four. Zane Windham is going to be your quarterback. He is a freshman for Grant. Trying to get him some snaps here. Wyndham turns and hands it. That looks like that's number six. Brendan Braden Sloan, who is a sophomore for Grant. And he's brought down for a loss of one. Second down and 16 now for Grant. Yeah, it looks like Neville's defense is – Joshua Bias on the tackle. Sorry, another yeah, young no. Tiger, sophomore. Yeah, we got a lot of new faces out there uh, on this drive defensively. A lot of, lot of young guys, underclassmen. Another handoff to Sloan, and he is tackled immediately. That's Alan Parker and Reese Reichardt, as well as – Malik Grayson. Slowed again on the carry. Brought down by number 42. Reese Whitehart. So a loss of another one on that play. Third down and 17. <laughs> Flying crickets. We've got crickets yeah. jumping everywhere in here. Another tackle for loss. I believe that was 96. Jordan Fobbs White in on that tackle. That pushes it back inside the 10 to the 9-yard line, and Grant's going to have to punt this football away. We've reached the five-minute mark here in the fourth quarter. Another sophomore. Younger brother of Matthew Fobbs. Yeah, great player. I believe he's at Tulane. He's at Tulane, yeah. that's right. I don't know if they're going to punt this one. The snap rolled back to Hedrick as – let's see, that was Reitzel and had to kind of hop – over yeah, that football. He, I don't know why they were even no, getting that close to yeah, it. Yeah, it's Peter, 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 and that means get away from it. Uh, and Reitzel's done a good job tonight um, of, of catching some punts. There's an art to that. You want to know, you, you got especially the ones that hit the ground, which ones do you go get and which ones do you stay away from? Short yeah. punt like that, stay away from it. And uh, <clears throat> Well, <clears throat> there was an unsportsmanlike penalty against the Tigers somewhere in that punt. So that's going to back it up. It was downed around the 47-yard line or the 45-yard line of Grant. And after the penalty is marked off, it's going to move it back to the Neville 40. Yeah, and that's unfortunate. We were going to start on our side of the 50 uh, with 4.23 left. And the, the Tigers have subbed out everywhere on the offense. That's Brock Jordan in at quarterback now. He hands it off. I believe that's Reitzel, and it is. He gets it out across the 50. That's going to be a sonic first down for the Tigers. And that's Reitzel. He's a sophomore. Yeah, uh, this is a lot of sophomores yeah, on this one yeah, right yeah. here um, on this line. I think the only junior out there is Corbin Falk. Or actually, uh, there's McCarty out to the near – sideline at receiver. So this time to Keen with another nice carry. This time to the right side. Gets it across the 40 and another Sonic first down. That looked like Davis Shelby lead blocking on that. It was. Davis is getting a little play in time. Like we've got number seven Hubbard back in the game, uh, the running back that was injured on the uh, 
drive before this. So, uh, this time they bring in Hubbard. And that, he was tackled for a loss right there. So second down and 11. We're under three minutes to go. Clock's still running here. Here we go, second down and 11. As a hush is falling over the crowd yeah, here at Bill Rupel. <laughs> Jordan calling for the snap. He's got it. He's going to hand it to Jakeen. Makes a man miss. Nice move there, and he's fighting across the 25 down to the 24-yard line. It's going to be another sonic drive-in on first on North 18th Street first down. Yeah, good run by Reitzel. Uh, he's going to be a fun one to watch. Uh, again, only yeah. a sophomore. We've seen a lot of him this year, and, and uh, you know, he, he's still got a lot of growing to do, and he runs the ball hard. He's downhill. Uh, look for nothing but good things out of him in the future. Almost to the two-minute mark here. The second half's gone a little slower than the first half. Yeah, it has. Another. Hand off to Reitzel, and this time there's nowhere to go, and they need to blow the whistle, <laughs> and they do, as he was met by a host of Grant Cougars. No gain on the play. Second down and ten now for the Tigers, and I just hope Jakeen's okay as yeah. he comes out. See, that's what happens. Well, that's right. You yeah. know, when you get tied up, and he just got thrown down, and let's see if we. Check in on him. I think he just got banged up. Yeah, he probably got his foot stepped on. This time, handoff to Hubbard. He makes a move at the 20, gets around the left edge, and he's going to be inside the five and pushed out of bounds at the two-yard line. <laughs> Neville sideline erupts for, for Hubbard. He, uh, They're going to do everything they can to yeah, get him a touchdown here. We're under a minute to go, so let's. they need to hurry up. And uh, get him a score. Tiger's going to have to at least run one more play. So first and goal, Tigers from the three. They hand it off again to Hubbard on the inside, and he's going to be tackled for no gain as we're under 30 seconds to go. And... It looks like that might be it, unless they're going to try to run another one. The Tigers are going to run it out. I think they're going to let this clock run out. They don't have to run another play. And I know, and, and you look at seven and Hubbard's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's yeah. like, man, I needed one more play. I yeah. might have could have got in there. But uh, either way, uh, a, a nice win for the Tigers, 2-0 and in district. 53 straight district victories. Here for Neville as the clock strikes triple zero, and they win this one 41 to 6. As you stick with us here as we move into the Martinez chiropractic post game show. A uh, couple of scores from around the area. I saw OCS went down tonight against Harding 31 to 14. But we'll get to a few of those after we get to our Marion State Bank sideline reporter, Jason Ewing, as he's set to interview Coach Tannehill following this 41-6 victory, and let's toss it down to him right now. Coach, 41-6, got a lot of Tigers in, especially in the second half. You know, offense, defense, both both look good. I, man, I was just so proud of the way our kids handled themselves the whole game. Uh, you know, we got those young Tigers in there, man. They played great. Uh, just fun watching those guys get that uh, varsity experience. But Jay Trailer came up with a stat. This is the 53rd straight district win for the Tigers, dating back to like 2008 against Ruston. Wow, that's 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 man, that's awesome news. T thank you, Jay. I know you're on top of everything, but. Uh, you know, we're just concentrating on getting better right now and just moving on to next week. Thank you, Coach. Thank you. Well, next week will be Tioga right here at Bill Rupel Stadium. 
Next Friday at 7 o'clock, we will have uh, the pep rally here on the network as well. Uh, Tiger Talk next Wednesday night at 6.30 live from Melvin's. But, uh, Robert, any final thoughts before we toss it to Will for the uh, post-game show? Yeah, good win. Uh, you know, move on to Tioga next week, and then uh, I believe we, we go to Franklin Parish to end the – end our regular season, and, and uh, then we have an open week and get ready for the playoffs. So, uh, good win. Check the box. Move on to Tioga next week. <laughs> All right. Will Anders is going to take over here. Got some post-game stats and scores uh, as well. And don't forget to to thank everybody. What you, you're that the stats. Oh, the stats. We're getting this, the stats right here Yeah, for you. Well, uh, Franklin Parish and Tioga in a battle for – the Indians homecoming, 16-14, fourth quarter. Franklin Parish leads the Indians. Some final scores. Washita falls to Ash, 35-10. Wasman wins, 28-0. Sterlington wins, 24-10. West Monroe defeats West Washita, 42-19. And like you said, OCS falls. Uh, final score, Neville, 41. 41-6. Yeah, 41-6. This is not updated. So mm-hmm. it's not updated. So. All right. Well, um, that'll do it. Let's see here. Hold on. We got some. Let's see if I can update these final stats here for you. There oh, it is. You got to gotta click refresh. You got to okay. click refresh That's there. That's on me. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> My bad. Uh, Tigers have 26 first downs tonight, 427 total yards, 84 through the air, 343 on the ground. And no turnovers. The Grant Cougars, eight first downs, 119 total yards, 69 <laughs> passing yards, and 54 rushing yards. So that's the final stats there. Tigers win 41-6. to six. So Fi- I mean, yep. Final stats brought to you by our good friends at NetTech, NetTech IT Solutions here in Monroe. All right. So, thanks to everybody that makes these broadcasts possible. Jesse Beard uh, running that scoreboard. I mean, it was the scoreboard sound today. Uh, but everybody up here, yeah, you know who they are. We appreciate you. Justin back at Sunny 98.3 Studios. We appreciate it. Tune in to uh, Rock 106 for the SMG and the 318 scoreboard show right after we go off. So, for everybody watching and everybody listening, we thank you for joining us here. Tigers win this one 41-6. Good night.